Houston, Texas. I am Eric Collins alongside my partner, David Nori. Stacey Dales will join us in just a couple of moments. Well, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, they are all kinds of excited. The Cornhuskers with a win today, they could clinch the Big 12 North and go to the Big 12 Championship game for the first time since 1999. And David, a big reason why has been the player their senior quarterback, Zach Taylor. Yeah, I can't imagine a better quarterback to come into one of the toughest environments in college football than Zach Taylor. He's got a big task ahead today. A win gets them into the Big 12 title game. He has 20 touchdown passes, only three interceptions, manages the game exceptionally well, takes care of the football, Zach Taylor is the key to this West Coast offense for Nebraska. Well, the Texas A&M Aggies, they had a bit of a disappointment a week ago right here at Kyle Field. They lost a tough one against the Oklahoma Sooners. Now, Texas A&M, they still could possibly win the Big 12 South, but they need a win out and they need some help. Now, in Texas A&M, when they're going good, it's because of their running attack. It's a two-headed monster in Jaworski Lane and Mike Goodson. Well, Stephen McGee's a great option quarterback, but when you talk about Jaworski Lane, he is one of the biggest, toughest short yardage runners in the country. Goes about 285 pounds, the J train. He really is a type of guy who can move the pile, who can soften the defense into the fourth quarter. And then you have Mike Goodson, a true freshman, a guy who a lot of people compare to Reggie Bush. He's that explosive. You get him out into space in the open field he is very tough to bring down I think he's one of the truly exciting young backs in college football yeah we are looking forward to a very good game this afternoon here in College Station Texas it is senior day the final game of the year here at home for 13 Texas A&M seniors playing here in front of the 12th man one final time it's Nebraska against Texas A&M coming your way it is a game with so much on the line. The season long race for the Big 12 championship is in the home stretch. Nebraska is the front runner in the north and with a victory today, the Cornhuskers can punch their ticket to KC. The Aggies of Texas A&M, they're stalking the field in the south. Led by the conference's most prolific rushing attack, the Maroon and White still have conference title hopes of their own. Big 12 North versus Big 12 South next. A fantastic day for football here at Kyle Field in College Station, Texas. Sellout crowd getting excited for the final home game of the year. Joining us now is Stacy Dale. She's down on the field. Stacy, what's going on? Well, Eric, Nebraska comes into this game with an abundance of confidence, of moxie. I spoke with several players. Defensive end Adam Carricker told me we're on the brink of blowing teams out. We haven't slammed the door on anybody, but it's been the focus of our attitude all week. I also spoke with quarterback Zach Taylor. Zach said, hey, I haven't been more excited to play in a game in my entire life than this one on the road. Not only do we have a chance to clinch the Big 12 North, but we haven't beat a Big 12 South team this season. He topped that off by saying, We've got a lot of confidence. We're at an all-time high with our chemistry. If we take care of the football, we'll be in great shape, Eric. Thank you so much, Stacy. Yeah, Zach Taylor, he is standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with greatness. He's got a chance to pass big names like Vince Ferragamo and David Hum with good performances this afternoon. 64 degrees at kickoff. It was high 80s yesterday in these parts. Wind may be a factor, 10 miles per hour. We will let you know which direction it is blowing. Matt Zemanski will kick off. Marlon Lucky and Brandon Jackson both back deep. And here we go. Jackson has it at the three. Starts right, is met and dropped at the 23-yard line. Flag is down on the first play of the game. Our referee today is Greg Burks. He will have the call for us. Holding number six on the return, 10 yard penalty, first down. Well, for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Zach Taylor is on the verge of breaking some long standing Cornhusker passing records, and Maurice Purify is a big reason why. Well, he's been going to Purify quite a bit over the last two or three weeks. Purify has been the go to receiver, and as Stacey Dales mentioned in her open, I really think the key 
to this football game for Nebraska is going to be taking care of the football. Zach Taylor is going to have to make good choices. The Huskers cannot turn the football over. The eye back, Brandon Jackson with the carry. Picks up four, maybe five on first down. Let's take a look at our starting lineups presented by City. We start with Nebraska, where offensively they average 34 points per game. They've got talented skill position players, but the big difference this year, David, has been the offensive line. You no, know, the offensive line has not only done a good job of protecting Zach Taylor, but they've really produced a run game, a running game that was missing in Bill Callahan's West Coast offense a year ago. A year ago, the Cornhuskers, 8-4, finished off their season strong. This year, 7-3, with a 4-2 mark in the Big 12. Jackson, again, this time wrapped up and brought down at the 15. Defensively, Texas A&M, they line up in Gary Darnell's version of a 4-2-5. After a tough first quarter a week ago against Oklahoma, it was the defensive line that really stepped up. Uh, two drives to open up that game for the Sooners, both 80-yard drives, and they... They pounded the ball on the ground at Texas A&M. The Aggies made a couple nice defensive adjustments and really shut down the Sooners over the course of the last three quarters in that game. Brought a couple safeties up near the line of scrimmage to help with numbers. Third down and short early. Pitch out goes to Jackson, his third consecutive carry, and he's not going to get there. Marcus Thornton meets him and drops him at the 16. the senior from Houston making the stop and it'll force a punt Dan Titchener sophomore from Cheyenne Wyoming comes on averaging 39 yards per punt gets it away Chad Schrader has the back pedal fields at his own 35 Weaves out across the 40. He's brought down at the 42. Take a look at the impact players for Texas A&M. Their big, plies on, big players on offense are in the backfield. Stephen McGee, Javorski Lane, and Mike Goodson. Now, Lane and Goodson really give you the combination of power and speed, a, a combination that every head coach would like to have. And then Stephen McGee has very capable ability as a passer, but you got to think about him first as an option quarterback. He's an option quarterback, and this is an option team. When you face them defensively, you've got to concentrate on breaking that play down. And the big fella, Lane, with the first carry of the game for Texas A&M. Nominal gain on first down. Now let's take a look at the starting lineups for Texas, for Texas A&M, presented by City. They are the top-ranked rushing attack in the Big 12. They have a number of different options when they decide to throw the football. Guys very talented on the outside. Martellus Bennett and his backup, Joey Thomas. They call themselves the Legion of Doom at the tight end spot. Mike Goodson is the back of the backfield with McGee. Little toss out, right side. Irvin Taylor with room on the right side. Good pitch and catch for the Aggies, and they pick up the first down. Well, for the Cornhuskers defensively, they've been battling inconsistency all season long. The difference makers are their bookend senior defensive ends and Jay Moore and Adam Carricker. Yeah, Moore and Carricker, a couple defensive ends that are not fun to play against for opposing ball carriers and quarterbacks. And I, I really think in Carriger, Nebraska has a defensive end that could go in the first round in the NFL draft next spring. Fresh set of downs. McGee to throw again. A little bit low. Skips in front of it. Schrader incomplete. Schrader, a senior from Austin, playing in his final game here at Texas A&M at Kyle Field. Well, Nebraska throughout this football game, they have to be option sound. They have to be able to know their assignments, take quarterbacks, pitch men. Everything starts with the option for this A&M offense. And what makes... This A&M offense so tough to defense beyond the option as McGee is a pretty solid thrower 16. from the pocket. 16, 16, 16, 16. Goodson with the carry, nowhere to go. He's going to be dropped for a loss of yards. Carricker, the man you're talking about, got in the backfield alongside Jay Moore to make the stop. 
Uh, you're going to see Coop Moore and Carricker quite a bit this afternoon. Carricker makes him special at that defensive end spot. He's not only a terror as a pass rusher, but he's very strong at the point of attack. And how many defensive ends at the college level go close to 300 pounds? Carricker very strong and holding the edge on the left side of that Husker defense. Third down and a bunch for a &M. Need to get to the 30-yard line. McGee with time. Throws underneath. Pass is complete. Pierre Brown not going to get to the first down marker. Going to bring up a fourth down and a decision for Texas A&M. Yeah, this is a decision for Coach Dennis Franchoni for the Aggies. And you know, just inside the 35-yard line, you don't pick up a lot with a punt here. Even if you're able to get the punt inside the 20, you don't pick up a lot in terms of field position. And looks like Coach Franchoni, after opting against yeah. a couple of decisions last week, rolling the dice against the Sooners, he's ready to gamble here early. A lot of talk in the past week about Franchoni not going for it on third and fourth down at short. Meeting four, McGee. Pass incomplete. Had it and then dropped it was Latidrick Riley. The senior has the pass knocked away from him by the strong safety, Tier Green. And the ball is going to go over to the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Five minutes into the game, both teams have had it once. Both teams have given it right back. Football presented by Best Buy. Five minutes into this one, neither team is able to get a scratch on their first drive. These are salad days for Bill Callahan and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. With a win today, they will clinch the Big 12 North and go to the Big 12 Championship game December 2nd. Marlon Lucky replaces Brandon Jackson in the backfield for the Cornhuskers. And Zach Taylor wants to throw for the first time today. Has a man pass too high. Looking for Purify. <laughs> David, this turnaround for Nebraska really started at the end of last year, according to Coach Callahan. Well, and, and three big wins down the stretch, including a, a win in the Alamo bowl game against Michigan. And, when we talked to Coach Callahan earlier this week. He felt that Michigan was really a BCS quality team. Now, the record didn't reflect it last year, but very close losses to top ranked teams coming up with that 7 and 5 record. Lucky with the ball. Get stays on his feet and gets up just across the line of scrimmage. Both teams are hitting early in this game. Now, this is a 4 2 5 defensive alignment for Texas A&M and what that does for the Aggies is it it gives them three safeties and you have the ability to force and run support have a run support safety on both sides gives your defense great balance and the other thing it does Eric there's a lot of spread offenses now in the Big 12 and you like to have an extra athlete out on the field with all the additional wide receivers that these spread offenses throw at you Taylor right side first first down of the game for the Cornhuskers Big gain on third and eight. Pass complete to Purify. Maurice Purify has become the go-to receiver for Zach Taylor. He's a big wide out, runs nice crisp routes, and he's a big target. He gets inside the cornerback, and Zach Taylor as we'll see this afternoon, capable of making all the throws. Gain of 20, which is par for the course for Purify. That's what he averages on his 25 catches so far this year. Jackson back in the game. His best gainer of the day. And he's out close to the 20-yard line before he's pushed out of bounds. Pickup of 18 yards. So I think that Nebraska... Yeah, they launched the tape from a week ago. The Sooners came out and pounded the ball at the Aggies. And you can't help but think that Bill Callahan used that tape, that game film, as a blueprint for what he wants to get done early in this football game. Pullback in motion. That's Dane Todd. 
They fake the end around. They give it to Jackson, who picks up five tough yards down to the 20-yard line. Chris Harrington on the stop. We will see four different eye backs in the game today for Nebraska. You just saw Brandon Jackson leave the game. He's replaced by Marlon Lucky. As a tight end, Josh Mueller lining up in the backfield. Now he's joined by Lucky. And they give it to Lucky. And the sophomore has the first down and more down to the 12-yard line. Well, we talked about the two backs that AM presents you. Javorski Lane and Mike Goodson. Nebraska goes four deep. And as of late, Brandon Jackson, Marlon Lucky have been getting the brunt of the carries. We saw Lucky on that last run. And Lucky is a guy that can be a big threat out of the backfield as a pass catcher and probably the best back in space. Taylor again keeps it on the ground and Lucky buries his head and gets inside the 10. There's not just one, not two, but four Nebraska Cornhuskers eyebacks all have over 300 yards so far in the year. Yeah, and in the neighborhood of 1,800 yards. It really doesn't matter how you get it done with one body or four bodies. This Nebraska running game, coming off a year ago where they're averaging less than 100 yards per game, looks like the running back by committee is going to take them well over 2,000 yards. Timeout on the field, the Nebraska Cornhuskers want to make sure with this trip into the red zone that they called just the right play. We'll see what Bill Callahan has up his sleeve when we come back. ESPN's College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy, thousands of possibilities, get yours. Chevrolet, America's brand, Chevy, an American revolution. And Dr. Pepper, with 23 flavors in every Dr. Pepper, there's more to it. And that was a shot of University Street here in College Station. That's the main drag. If we'd have kept that shot a little bit longer, you would have saw the Dixie Chicken, which I am told is the place that you have to go to when in College Station. I, I missed that one last night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, second down and seven. After the timeout, let's see what Bill Callahan wants to do. Lie back behind Taylor is Marlon Lucky. And they give it to Lucky. Right side, tripped up at the eighth. David, this is a big drive for Nebraska to get a stop against Texas A&M and then take the ball all the way down to the red zone. No, when you play at Kyle Field, especially with a Big 12 championship game appearance on the line, you know, it, it's a tough environment. And, and to have the running game and to be able to pound between the tackles like the Huskers have done on this drive really takes a lot of pressure off a quarterback. The Huskers have been very impressive on the ground. And a whistle before the ball is snapped. Looks like we're ready to go. It's just an equipment problem. Cornhuskers pretty darn good in that red zone. 30 touchdowns and 37 trips inside the 20. This is the ninth play of the drive. Third and five. Taylor flushed out. Gets down close to the first down. This is going to be tight. Danny Gore is the man who stopped him at about the three. And they have it. No measurement needed. Well, we talked about it at the top. Zach Taylor. We're going to come into Kyle Field. Tough surroundings. A lot of crowd noise. You want an experienced quarterback that's going to be making decisions. Taking care of the football. And Taylor, not a fast guy. In fact, he's, you know, he's below average speed, but very decisive when he decides to pull the football down. And a powerful short yardage back, Cody Glenn, in the game. But they're going to throw it back of the end zone. Pass too high, incomplete, looking for Franz Hardy. 
And you look at the numbers over the course of the year for Zach Taylor, and the first thing that pops out at you, 20 touchdown passes, only three interceptions. And whatever, what that tells you is he really gets the concept that Bill Callahan's trying to teach in the West Coast offense. You want to frustrate defenses, keep the ball away from the defensive jerseys. And Zach Taylor, I think that's priority number one for him this afternoon. He's done a great job throughout the season. This time they hand it off to Glenn, and he's in the end zone. Cody Glenn is seventh touchdown of the season, and the Huskers jump out on top. their second possession the Nebraska Cornhuskers cash in they get six riding the powerful legs of Cody Glenn Jordan Congdon will come on now and try and make it a seven nothing game that snap good hold and the kick goes through the upright and it is a seven nothing lead the visitors from Lincoln, Nebraska, they've come down here and grabbed the early lead. It's been Cody Glenn getting across the goal line. Nebraska draws first blood there on top of Texas A&M 7-0. Cody Glenn, seventh touchdown of the season, happened an 11-play, 66-yard drive. Jake West will kick it off. Back deep, that's Kerry Franks. He's a good one. Averaging 30 yards per return. And he's going to get an opportunity here. No, it's over his head and through the back of the end zone. Well, tonight, freshman phenom Colt McCoy leads number four Texas into the Little Apple to take on the Kansas State Wildcats. Others will see Wake Forest battle Florida State this evening. Saturday Night Football on ABC presented by Southwest Airlines. Tonight at 8 Eastern time. Now here's our IBM Star Watch. And how about Colt McCoy? Just a freshman, but already set the Texas record for most touchdown passes in a season. I think he has a way to go before he makes people forget about Vince Young. But how about the first season for Colt McCoy? And he seems to just be getting better and better more comfortable in the pocket as the season goes on. McGee hands it off to Javorski Lane, who is a hard man to bring down. He picks up two before Character jumps on his back. And Javorski Lane declined all media requests during the week. And there are a couple Texas A&M fans that were not real excited about Dennis Franchoni and his, you know, his election several times last week to to kick short field goals against Oklahoma. But, you know, one guy that wasn't excited as well was Javorski Lane, and you can't blame him. I mean, coming into this game, Lane has picked up first downs on 24 of 27 third and fourth down chances. This time they fake to Lane. McGee wants a bundle, has a man wide open, and Franks, he's got the football and a huge gain for the Aggies. Pickup of 47 yards. Well, this was a double move on the outside, and Franks is one of the true speed guys on the outside for Dennis Franchoni. Watch the double move. And that was a pretty move that he threw on Andre Jones, the young cornerback. And if McGee hits him in stride there, he scores. So the football all the way down to the 31-yard line. The Aggies in business, five wide. And the pass is complete. Pierre Brown with the catch, and Brown close to first down yard. Now let's go to Matt Weiner in our New York studio for a Sports Center in-game update. All right, Eric, a Verizon wireless update from Tucson. Cal began the day eighth in the BCS standings. Two teams ahead of them have already lost this week, and Deshaun Jackson has given them a 7-0 lead. 95 yards on the punt return, his fourth punt return for touchdown this season, 12th of the season altogether, and the Bears up 7-3. 
Thank you, man. Yeah, that Deshaun Jackson, if you haven't seen him play, he is a speed merchant. He can burn you quick. Second and one. Good opportunity for the Aggies here to do some damage. Goodson with the carry. Touchdown, Texas A&M. And then giving it right back, the Aggies with an extra point of tying this game. I think they're liking the play call of Dennis Francione this week. Lane Newman trying to tie it up at seven. Lefty kicker. No worries. So both teams dialing it up with the second possession with the football. Cody Glenn scored for Nebraska, and then Mike Goodson ripped up a 22-yard touchdown to tie the game. Well, hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Mike Goodson, 22-yard touchdown, scampered on the right side. Yeah, and this is an option play, and the toughest offenses to stop or offenses where you can have an option threat. Go ahead and freeze it right there. Look at the block by Alexander on the outside on Jones. But offenses that can run option and have a quarterback that threatens the field in the passing game, that's a fair for a defensive coordinator to look at. Cornhuskers returning the football. Cruising down the left side. Marlon Lucky pushed out of bounds just across the 30-yard line. And a flag comes down late. Marlon Lucky had a good return. Let's see if it holds up. Uh, this is going to be a late hit out of bounds against the Aggies. It might have been Nathan Hale, number 12. Personal foul, number 15, AM. 15 yard penalty, first down. And they got the number wrong. That was Nathan Hale, number 12. Clearly out of bounds. Hale is the official 12th man, the walk on who is on the kickoff coverage team. Normally he wears number 17, but today he has the honor of wearing number 12. Yeah, 12th man's been hurting AM a bit over the last couple weeks. Last, last week, Oklahoma goes for it on fourth down to put the game away. Aggies got caught with 12 men on the field. Cody Glenn still in the game. And Glenn, this time. Carries it across the 50, gets out to the 47-yard line. Well, near the conclusion of today's game, we will select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. To honor their determination, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And one 12th man that never hurts the Aggies is this crowd at Kyle Field. Really one of the biggest factors in the country when you talk about venues on Saturday. Glenn, his second straight carry. And he has a first down inside the 40. Chris Harrington trips him up. The, the Aggies put together a quick strike drive to tie this football game up. But there's a pattern that's emerging here in the first quarter. And that's this offensive line for Nebraska is really playing the football game on the Aggies side of the line of scrimmage. They've been big and they've been active and given Lucky and ja Jackson plenty of room to run. Glenn, this time bottle up close to the line of scrimmage. Well, it took a while, but the Nebraska Cornhuskers, this year they've really figured out what Bill Callahan's trying to do offensively. He brings in his West Coast system that he used with the Oakland Raiders. And finally, after three years, everyone's clicking on the same page. Well, and everybody tosses around the term West Coast offense. It's gotten to the point where people don't even really understand what the West Coast offense is. But a lot of people, when they hear that term, they think passing first. Couldn't be, you know, more different. Uh, the, the running game is very important to this offensive scheme. Passes incomplete, looking for Purify, 
Good defensive play to knock it away. That's Jordan Peterson, redshirt freshman from Lexington, Texas. Yeah, it was a nice break on the ball by Peterson. And you know, Eric, you talk about the West Coast offense and you know, the West Coast offense in its truest form based on short throws, throws that are designed to get you yards on rundowns and make things easier for you on second and, and third down. But you got to hit those balls to keep this offense clicking. And case in point, Nebraska, 14 rush plays, four passes so far in this game out of their West Coast offense. They're going to throw for it on third and long, and they complete the pass. Todd Peterson, his first grab of the game, and a fresh set of downs for the Huskers. Well, when we saw Bill Callahan you know, back in 2002 with the Oakland Raiders take that team to Super Bowl 37, Rich Gannon was the quarterback. And Rich Gannon, whenever he threw the football, that ball would come out quickly, a, a quick release. And that's what impresses you about Zach Taylor once he gets set in the pocket. The ball comes out quickly, and he's able to get the ball out before the pass rush arrives. On first down, Taylor's going to operate out of the shotgun. With time. Spins it out, pass complete. Inside the five-yard line goes Nate Swift, the sophomore. Let's go down in the field, and Stacy, what's going on, Stacy? Boy, our guy spoke to Zach Taylor about how tough it is to learn this West Coast offense. He said it was insane when he first got to Nebraska. It took him at least six months to get the hang of it. He didn't think he actually ever would get the hang of it. But uh, the biggest challenge, David, and you'll know this, is just learning the ter terminology in huddles. He said he has to deliver about two to three sentences and look at each and every offensive player that has a specific route. So it's a lot more difficult than perhaps another offense, David. Well, and that's, and that's a great point. I mean, when you bring an NFL-style offense, especially a complex you know quote unquote West Coast offensive scheme to a college program you worry can the kids pick that up I mean there's limited practices there's limited time that student athletes can get out on the field where you can teach them and, and you know it you talked to Bill Callahan earlier this week and he said hey it's it's the opposite we have a lot more time we have more players we've got scout teams and you know, when you have a Zach Taylor, like Stacy Dale said, a guy who's a sponge, who's a, a kind of a coach on the field in addition to what he can do athletically, you know, it, it, he's been the type of quarterback where Bill Callahan has been able to put more off in, offense in as opposed to less. Dead ball foul, number 26 of Nebraska. 15-yard penalty, first down. Penalty came at the end of the play. Yeah, and that was, you know, that, that that's that's not a very smart play, especially when you're in the red zone down inside the 10-yard line. And that's the way you stall drives. That's Dan Erickson, junior from Omaha, called for that penalty. And Nate Swift is still down on the field after landing awkwardly. Let's take a listen. Well, this is a nice job by Taylor to come down underneath. And you hear the leather. And the helmets colliding on that play. And when the AM Aggies get together with the Huskers of Nebraska, there's going to be some hitting going on down on field level. I can assure you that. Swift led the team in catches a year ago. This year, not nearly as productive, but still highly thought of in Bill Callahan's offense. It's not first and goal, but the ball all the way back on the 20 yard line. Underneath a minute to play, first quarter. Taylor steps up in the pocket. Still on his feet, picks up a couple, and is dropped at an 18-yard line. Made the best of a bad situation there. Well, and that's what you count on Zach Taylor to do. I mean, when you're when you're coaching quarterbacks at any level, you don't want quarterbacks going backwards and taking big sacks when the pressure comes down in the pocket. You want those quarterbacks working back towards the line of scrimmage. Zach Taylor turns a negative play into a couple yards. Taylor empties the backfield and then decides that that's still not good enough. He calls timeout eight seconds remaining in the first quarter. And again, 
You saw this last possession for Nebraska. When they get down to that red zone, they don't want to make a bad decision, so they call a timeout. Well, and, and we talked about the touchdown interception ratio for Zach Taylor. We talked about how the Huskers have really found a run game this year. And I think it's that addition of the run game that's allowing them to make this run and, and, and it gives them a shot with a win this afternoon to get into the Big 12 championship game. And, and when you have Zach Taylor managing the football game at the quarterback position, your decision maker, he always gives you a shot on the road to win football games. We talked to Nebraska offensive coordinator Jay Norvell a couple of days ago, and we talked about his quarterback, Zach Taylor, for about five minutes, and he never once mentioned anything about his physical tools, about his athletic ability. We finally said, does he have anything going on? He said, oh, yeah, he throws it well, he runs it pretty well. But the point was, they talked about his mental makeup, they talked about his decisions that he makes. Well, and Bill Callahan, you know, Bill Callahan says there were some limitations to Rich Gannon, you know, the quarterback that took my team, the Oakland Raiders, to the, the Super Bowl. There were some throws out there that that Rich Gannon, you know, really, really couldn't make out to the perimeter from time to time. And you know, Zach Taylor, a young quarterback in Nebraska, Bill Callahan says this kid can make all the throws. Zach Taylor on the year, 20 touchdown passes, just three interceptions. The only man who's got a better ratio of touchdowns to interceptions is Kevin Cobb. Down at Houston, just down the road. Oh, that, those are tremendous numbers. That's uh, to play in the Big 12 in a league this competitive with the defenses that you see game in and game out. That touchdown to interception ratio, I mean, very impressive. Taylor has his man. It's complete to Purify, who dives to the five yard line, and that'll do it for quarter number one here at College Station, Texas. Uh, that was a nice job by Purify to sit down in that little void in the zone and move the chains for the Huskers. So both teams will have to march 95 yards the other way. Zach Taylor hopes to make the walk worthwhile. Nebraska and Texas A&M, they're deadlocked at seven, but the Cornhuskers knocking on the door. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Welcome back to College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy. Nebraska Cornhuskers taking on the Texas A&M Aggies in the final home game of the year at Kyle Field. And the Huskers knocking on the door. They've got the ball on the five-yard line. Trying to punch it in for their second touchdown in as many possessions. The give goes to Glenn, and the power back stays on his feet and gets in the end zone. Let's go! Let's go! Let's fucking go! He was dead to right, and off the three-yard line, he busted a tackle and scores his tech second touchdown of the game. Dennis Francioni has seen enough of Cody Glenn. The power back comes in in goal line situations and has done his job two consecutive times down the field for the Cornhuskers. Congan comes on for the extra point. Little punch shot through the uprights. And it's a 14-7 lead. The Cornhuskers led by Cody Glenn on top of the Aggies. Now you talk about bringing a physical aspect to goal line running. Watch what Glenn does to Gore number four. Just flat runs him over at the three yard line. Getting the pad level down. That could have been a five yard face mask. And Glenn, two touchdowns early for Nebraska. The Huskers really establishing themselves up front along that offensive line. Nebraska so far today, oh my, they're winning the, uh, the battle of time of possession and then some. And that's doing something. Texas A&M on the year as a team, they are second in the entire country in time of possession. Well, the Aggies watch oh, the Oklahoma Sooners last week come out and back up consecutive 80-yard drives to take a 14-3 lead in that football game. And Nebraska... And no secret early in this football game coming out and again trying to test Texas A&M and their resolve against the run. Kick off into the wind. 
Goes into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Now let's go back to the studio for another update. Matt Weiner. Matt. All right, Eric, it's a Taco Bell update from Evanston. Northwestern standing in the way of Ohio State and Michigan. C.J. Batcher back to pass, and Brandon Mitchell led him like a comic book. 46 yards the other way. Three Northwestern turnovers have resulted in 21 Ohio State points. Notre Dame now up 14-0 at Air Force. Thank you, Matt. Well, the last time that Ohio State ventured to Evanston, they didn't like what they saw. They lost in overtime. 27, 33 to 27. That was two years ago, 2004. This time around, a little bit different team for Ohio State. Jaworski Lane doesn't get the ball. He's faked to him, and instead, Stephen McGee takes it himself and has a good gain on first down. Well, we talk so much, David, about Zach Taylor. They say the same things in these parts about Stephen McGee and what he brings to the table. Well, McGee is stepping in for Reggie McNeil last November against Oklahoma. Really played six quarters down the stretch, including a, a pretty impressive effort against Texas, an upset bid against the eventual national champions. Impressed Dennis Franchoni with his toughness and his ability to both run and pass from the quarterback position. And this job has been his ever since. Goodson with the ball, brought down for a loss. Steve Octavian busts into the backfield and makes the stop. Well, this Husker defense has been tough against the run the last couple weeks. Now, yeah, breakdown late against Oklahoma State. 16 0 lead evaporated against the Cowboys, but you look at the performances they've laid out on defense the last two or three weeks, and this defense continues to improve. Third down and nine. They need to cross the 30-yard line. McGee. Brought down for another loss. It's a sack in the backfield. Good defensive play. The Cornhuskers making it happen. Two consecutive losses that time. Ola Dagonduro with the sack. Well, Stephen McGee, we talked about his ability to throw the ball from the pocket. Well, this is not an offense that's designed to pick up third and long. And the Huskers, with the talent they line up, especially at the defensive end positions, you put yourselves in third and long situations, McGee is going to be under distress. Snap is high, but no rush. Short kick, fielded at the 41-yard line. Grixby with the football, and Grixby nowhere to go. He's brought down. So the Nebraska Cornhuskers will take over. They'll have the football, and Zach Taylor will try and make it pay off once again. Last two times the Cornhuskers have had it, they've scored seven. Welcome back, everyone, to College Station, Texas. A little bit of pressure right now on Gary Darnell, now in his first year as the defensive coordinator for Texas A&M. Last two drives for Nebraska, they have really gashed that defense for AM. Well, similar to the first two drives for Oklahoma a week ago, they may have to get the safeties involved. First down carry, Brandon Jackson picks up five. Let's go back to New York where John Saunders is standing by. John? Well, we just want to let people know as you look forward to next week's Michigan-Ohio State matchup that both teams are taking care of business this afternoon, at least early. The Buckeyes up over Northwestern 21-3, while Michigan leads Indiana 14 to nothing, both with over 10 minutes left in the first half. Eric, back to you. Thank you, John. That's shaping up to be an absolute doozy next week down in Columbus. Second out at six. Fake to Lucky. Fake the end around. Taylor keeps it himself. A little bit of a stagger and gets out close to first down yards. It's going to bring up a third down and one. And a flag flies deep in the backfield. Wow, this flag came in late. And Zach Taylor had a receiver running deep. It looked like Purify down the middle of the field on a post route. And that flag came well after the play was over. There is no foul on the play. 
Must have fallen out of a pocket. And Zach Taylor trying to get people lined up. A big part of this West Coast offense is what goes on before the snap. The Huskers like to move players around, motion, formations, shifts. A lot of those components that we saw the NFL level with Bill Callahan. And what you do there is you give a defense a lot to prepare for during the week. And then you test them to see if they can get lined up before the snap of the football. Third and two, Taylor wants to throw out of the backfield. Gets it to Lucky. Makes a man miss. Has the first down and more. Lucky with a chance. Inside the 10, inside the five. Oh, they trumped him on third and two, a pickup of 42. Well, this is a beautiful ball from Zach Taylor. A lot of people say, hey, swing route, you should hit that, but he put the ball in the front pocket, gave Lucky a nice ball to take up field, and how about the play by Lucky to make the defender miss on the perimeter? And pretty darn good blocking on the outside by the receivers. Looked like France Hardy, number seven, getting a nice block downfield. The Cornhuskers over the years, you know, Eric, they've always been known for perimeter blocking. You can't line up and play wide receiver at Nebraska unless you're able to block downfield. You don't block, you don't play. That's for sure. That was a block and a half by Todd Peterson. Man is still down, left side. That's actually Marlon Lucky who's being tended to. After the pickup of 42 yards, came down hard. So, ball's going to be on the four-yard line. Should be an easy decision as what's going to happen here. They've got a power back in Cody Glenn. But Glenn's actually not in the game. It's actually Brandon Jackson in the backfield next to Taylor. Pitch and catch. Touchdown. Peterson. Six more for Nebraska. Possessions have resulted in touchdowns against Dennis Francione's bunch. Defensively, they're struggling right now. For Peterson, that's his second touchdown grab of the year. For Zach Taylor, that's his 21st touchdown throw, and that is significant as he has just set a brand new Nebraska single season record for touchdowns. He's got 21. It was set up by a fantastic catch and run by Marlon Lucky, and it pays off with a four yard touchdown to Todd Peterson. It's 21 7 Nebraska. ESPN's College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy. Thousands of possibilities. Get yours. Pontiac. Go online to vote for this week's Pontiac game-changing performance. And Aflac. Ask about it at work. Shine uh, replay of the TV. No, nothing. I can feel it in the rudders. Now, there's a special pageantry and tradition that goes along with football here at Texas A&M. These are the guys who brought us the flyover before today's game. Just an extra special environment with this being the final home game of the year and it being Veterans Day. All right, 11 minutes remaining here in the first half. The kickoff into the end zone and out of the end zone. Texas A&M will take over at the 20, down 21-7. to Well, Zach Taylor has been on the money in the first half here for Nebraska. You couldn't ask him for better execution from the quarterback position. Sprint out to the right. And again, the ball comes out with great timing. And if you're gonna play on the road, especially against this Texas A&M defensive outfit with the speed, with the three safeties, you gotta throw the ball with timing. And Zach Taylor has been on the money. The Corps of Cadets not liking what they're seeing so far. <laughs> Dennis Franchoni <laughs> pleading his case, and you have to admire the fact that he 
called the official serve. McGee keeps it, throws it out, pass complete to Latydrick Riley. Good gain on first down. Riley, a senior, getting the start today in honor of the fact that he is graduating this spring. Well, Nebraska's been tough against the run, and they've been committed to stopping Lane and Goodson early in this football game. And Stephen McGee is going to have to look to Riley and some of the other wideouts outside. I think it's going to be a matter of the Aggies loosening up things through the passing lanes to open up the run game. Delayed handoff to Goodson, and he's tripped up. Right at the line of scrimmage, Jay Moore, the senior from Elkhorn, Nebraska, makes the stop. It'll bring up a third down and four. Well, Adam Carricker, defensive end for Nebraska, gets a lot of the headlines, a lot of the attention, but Jay Moore has put together a heck of a season over on the right side, number 44. Had a big game last week against Missouri. A game that against the Tigers, it really gave Nebraska control in the North Division of the Big 12. Bader, the man in motion. Little option look. Left side. Goodson, nowhere to go. Wrapped up and brought down at the 18-yard line. These Huskers are playing with fire in their eyes. Well, Courtney Grixby, number two, the cornerback. I mean, this is a special play by a cornerback into the boundary. Two. Loss of six on that play. Well, keep an eye on Grixby. He's going to force. He's going to come up. And he takes on Chris Alexander, the fullback, with his off shoulder. And recognition of the play. And then Grixby, play, Grixby plays it perfectly on the perimeter. And now Grixby goes back deep to field this punt. And it's a good one. High spiral over his head. Takes a big bounce. He picks it up in the 21 and goes down at the 22. 50-yard punt. One yard return, Justin Brantley, with his best punt of the day. Time now for our Athlac trivia question. This week's question is, who holds the longest standing individual record at Texas A&M? Any record, well, huh? Any record, we'll let you ponder it for That's a while. Pretty it's broad. Football. Oh, yeah. That's We're not pretty talking pretty about swimming or diving. It's a pretty broad-based question <laughs> for the Aflac this week. They played some good football for a long time in these yeah. parts. I'm assuming it's a football record they're talking about. <laughs> All right, Nebraska will try and make it four in a row. The last three times of the football, they've cashed in with touchdown. Once again, a lot of motion before the snap. Empty backfield on first down. Over the middle, short pass is complete. Pickup of eight yards to Terrence Nunn. Now with that last touchdown pass, Zach Taylor passed the legendary Vince Ferragamo, the Nebraska all-time charts for most touchdowns in a season. Ferragamo had 20 scoring strikes back in 1976. And now Zach Taylor with 21. Yeah, Vince looked pretty, pretty solid there throwing the football. Of course, took the Los Angeles Rams to their only Super Bowl performance back in 1980. Lost that game to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Second and short, another pitch and catch complete. Franz Hardy with the first down and more. He's pushed out of bounds by Brock Newton, but not before he has another big gainer for Nebraska. A pickup of 26 yards. Well, Zach Taylor's getting great work up front from his offensive line. The threat of the run. They're going to watch Hardy working up at the top of the screen, establish a deep threat, and then come back to the football. Three-step drop by Zach Taylor, and again, the ball comes out in a hurry. So again, the Cornhuskers on the move. Kenny Wilson now in the game for the first time, and Wilson with the football. Another 10-yard gain. David, I have to ask you, what can Texas A&M possibly do to slow down this onslaught? Well, if you look at the run game and the, su the success that Nebraska has had running the football here in the first half, I think you got to start thinking about getting safeties up on the line of scrimmage. And 
You know, last week, the safeties had to get involved with all the success the Sooners had early. The problem is Zach Taylor and his wide receivers are slicing and dicing in the pass game. And Taylor's doing a great job of distributing the ball to the wideouts. Wilson's still in the game. His second straight carry. He's tripped up in the backfield. Good play by Michael Bennett, the older brother of Martellus Bennett, the all-everything tight end for Texas A&M. Loss of two. And the problem that A&M has right here is if you start bringing safeties up on the line of scrimmage and you start taking risks with numbers, Zach Taylor and his wide receivers are good enough that they can sting you for playing that style of play in the secondary. Another flip out to Lucky. Waits for a block. Slips, regains his balance, and gets to the 27. That's some patient running right there from Marlon Lucky. Well, it pays to be patient if you got Lydon Murtha. Murtha, the big left tackle, moving to the outside. I mean, if I've got a six foot seven, 315, go ahead and roll it. Six foot seven, 315 pounds on the outside. Watch him get outside. And he squares up. Gives Lucky a chance to cut it back inside to the middle of the field. Crowd trying to get into it. Urge the Aggie defense on. Third down at six. Taylor has him in. Incomplete. Looking for Terrence Nunn, Jordan Peterson with the breakup. That saved six. Nunn had a step on him, but Peterson was able to deflect the yeah, underthrown ball. Taylor had the picture he wanted down the field. This is a nice route by Nunn, and he's working against Peterson. Ball was just slightly underthrown, hung up a bit. If Taylor delivers that ball with some authority towards the back of the end zone, AM is really in trouble. Now they're going to go for it on fourth down and six instead of going for a long field goal. Play clock down to two. Just get it off. And Taylor is brought down at the 40. Justin Warren, the all Big 12 middle backer, with the stop and momentum quite possibly going to Texas A&M. On fourth and six, a loss of 10. The defense finally bows its neck. Let's see if Texas A&M offensively can cash in when we come back. Time now for our Pacific Life game summary. Nebraska scored the first touchdown of the game with Mike Goodson answered for Texas A&M, 22-yard run down the right side. Cody Glenn then came right back, his second of two touchdowns on the day. And the scoring capped off. Todd Peterson, a four-yard touchdown catch. 21-7, Cornhuskers on top of A&M looking to clinch the Big 12 North title. First catch of the day, that's the tight end from A-Leaf, Texas, Martellus Bennett. And Martellus Bennett is a special tight end, a gifted tight end. Plays on the basketball team for the Aggies. And he's one of those rare guys that can play with a hand on the ground on the line of scrimmage and also split him out in a two-point stance. It'll play fake. Stephen McGee throws up top pass incomplete, looking for Chad Schrader. Let's go back down to the field. Stacy, what's going on? Well, you guys brought him up, Martellus Bennett, and he, he's kind of a character on this team, guys. He's uh, one of the funnier gentlemen that keeps everybody laughing, but he's also a leader, and you can't get a better story than the fact that last year he hosts Mike Goodson on his recruiting trip. He wore the number three. Goodson came in with the number three on his, jer on his back his entire career, and he said, hey, you can take this jersey, my jersey, the number three, if you come to this institution. And he's both of them making quite a contribution, Eric. Yeah, two very high-profile recruits. Thank you, Stacy. 
You're talking about Goodson and you're talking about Bennett. Those are two guys that any program in the country would have loved to have got. Well, Bennett got a lot of time for Bobby Knight down the stretch a year ago on the basketball team, a team that got a couple games deep into the NCAA tournament. Timeout on the field. It's going to be a big third down for Stephen McGee and Texas A&M when we come back. Final home game of the year here at Texas A&M. Texas A&M taking on the Nebraska Cornhuskers and facing a very important third down and five. They don't want to give that ball back to Nebraska. Aggies have yet to convert a third down so far today. Need to get to the 47. McGee pocket collapsing and he goes down. Sacked. Good defensive play. Barry Turner, his first sack of the year, and the punt team will have to come on for the Aggies. Well, Barry Turner, and we talked about more in character at the defensive end position for the Huskers. Turner comes in and throwing situations, and oftentimes they'll move character down as a defensive tackle. And look at Turner stay after it in the pocket. And the difference in this football game early is Nebraska has had a nice combination of run and pass offensively, and they've kept their quarterback clean in the pocket. McGee facing a lot of pressure against this Nebraska defensive front. Justin Brantley got off a boomer last time. This time, pretty good kick as well. Courtney Grixby gets away from it. Dangerous play. He came close to touching the football. It skips away and out of bounds at the 11-yard line. So a good kick for Justin Brantley. Well, earlier, we asked you the Aflac trivia question. That question was, who holds the longest standing individual record at Texas A&M, talking football-wise? Here is your answer. I don't even have a guess for you there, Eric. <laughs> Oh, of course, it was Jelly Woodman. <laughs> Seven single-game touchdowns back in 1926. I'm kicking myself. I can't believe I didn't know that. Good old Jelly. Pretty big game against New Mexico, though, when you when you look at it. Seven, That's seven six points. Stands up to the test of time. <laughs> Marlon Lucky, the carry on first down, moves the pile. Pickup of six. Let's go back to New York and check in with Matt Weiner. Matt. All right, Eric, thanks very much. Here's our vote for the Pontiac game changing performance of the day. You can scratch Auburn from the list of one loss contenders. Throttled by George and Trey Battle had a big part in it. Three picks, including one back for a touchdown. To vote for your Pontiac game changing performance, just go to ESPN.com and Eric, type in the keyword Pontiac. Will do, Matt. Oh, pretty big surprise there, David. Huge surprise, especially coming against a team that a lot of people felt had a shot to maybe navigate their way into that national title game. Lucky dropped, but a flag down on the play. And that's the second big loss at home for Auburn, Georgia, and early in the year against Arkansas. Well, and, and you look at Louisville, their loss on Thursday, I mean, it's pretty far-fetched to think that Rutgers, as an undefeated team, can get into the national title game. Obviously, Boise State is not going to get into that game. I think it's a, it's become a virtual certainty that we're going to have a one-loss team going up against Illegal Michigan or Ohio State on Nebraska. in the national Five title game. Penalty. Second down. So Bill Callahan's bunch stubs their toe. They'll move back five yards. Now, if you're a Rutgers fan, you, you have to be excited about teams going down in front of you. And you know, we, we saw it in 2001, the last time this Nebraska Cornhuskers team played in the national title game. They really got into that game almost by default. They weren't even in the Big 12 championship game that year, but a lot of losses late in November, like dominoes, they were falling. And Eric Crouch, the quarterback, got his Nebraska team into that game against Miami. Taylor with time, flips it out to Jackson. Jackson trying to make a man miss, slips the first tackle, and is pushed out of bounds at the 16-yard line by Brock Newton. That'll stop the clock, 3.03 remaining. First half, third down and four. So Zach Taylor is getting great protection up front, and, and I really love his feet. He's aggressive with his feet. He's getting his depth and his drops quickly. The ball's coming out quickly. And if you can play like that on the road as a quarterback and throw the ball accurately, you can really frustrate a defense. Taylor, quick toss 
to Purify. Incomplete. Good defense knocking the ball away from Purify. Our Keith Brown with the coverage. Now, and our Keith Brown timed that up pretty well. Almost arrived early. Zach Taylor again right on the money for Bill Callahan. And taking a look at the reaction, and I think that pretty safe to say that Zach Taylor thought that our Keith Brown arrived early as well. Dan Titchener will punt it away. Fair catch called for and made by Chad Schrader. And the Aggies will take over at the 45-yard line. Well, coming up on the Capital One Halftime Show, John Craig and Doug will have highlights from all the early action, plus a breakdown of next week's big game between Michigan and Ohio State. And David, I know that you really think that Michigan has a great chance playing on the road in Columbus. I think they do. I think that, you know, earlier this year, Ohio State was exposed a bit in the Penn State game, had troubles with the Penn State defense. I think Michigan's going to be the most athletic group Ohio State works against. This, this might be Lloyd Carr's year. Mike Goodson brought down at the 48-yard line. The pickup of a couple. Andrew Shanley with the stop. I do think in that football game and this is going to be maybe the biggest Michigan Ohio State football game since 1973 when two undefeated teams met in that game a 10 10 tie I think it's going to be very important for Chad Henney the quarterback to play the way that Zach Taylor has played on the road today for Nebraska Henney's going to have to play error free football if Michigan's going to win that football game It goes to Lane, who butts heads. McGee actually keeps the football, and McGee tries the right side and picks up the first down. The deception got me. Well, that's a big part of this offense. Uh, the defensive coordinators that line up against Texas A&M, they say this is an option team first. And that's just a design keep to McGee. About a 4-6-5 guy who can run the option. You know, he's more than an adequate thrower, but, but defenses really have to pay attention to his feet. He can hurt you with his legs. Martellus Bennett, the tight end, winds up wide left. He's open in the flat. McGee doesn't see him. Now he does. Bennett with the catch, and he's brought down at the 40. Pick up a five on first down, and the clock continues to roll. Well, Kevin Cosgrove, the defensive coordinator for Nebraska, I really like his game plan. He had his defense ready early in this football game to take on the challenge against Texas A&M and and his defenders are really rallying to the football getting great play from his front four McGee again perfect strike passes complete to the tight end Bennett who's knocked out of bounds but not before he whacks Andrew Shanley Clock stops, 105 remaining, first half. Well, Martellus Bennett, we talked about his special qualities, and he gets split out like a wide receiver, and he runs this route like a wide out. McGee finally gets time in the pocket, gets the protection to get set, and he delivers that ball in good shape outside. Bennett now with 32 catches on the year, just a sophomore. Oh. Quick toss, complete. It's Schrader with the grab, close to another first down. They're going to say he's short, and the clock continues to move. No huddle here for McGee. Nice ball on the slant, but plenty of time. AM does have two timeouts to work with. McGee right side, incomplete, looking for Taylor. Ball in and out of the mitts. That'll stop the clock and bring up a third and two. Now Taylor's the top receiver, and he's working against Andre Jones, and he has to make this catch. That was a drop, and the ball's coming loose before the hit by Jones. Can't ask for a better throw from McGee on the slant route. 
And now with two timeouts remaining McGee decides to burn one of them. It's a big third down and two. They need to make a good decision. Well and that's tough to burn that timeout after an incomplete pass. You want to save timeouts for situations when the clock is running. And that's a bit of a breakdown in terms of clock management there. David, you've been in these huddles before. What's Stephen McGee being told right here? What's a good option on third and two? Well, on third and two, you got you can't be worried about the clock. You want to just get to a play where you can pick up the first down. I think Javorski Lane at 285 pounds always, you know, a good call here. If you have to, you can use the timeout if you don't pick up the first down. But remember, you move the stakes, the clock stops and you can get up to the line of scrimmage. So again, that 30 seconds isn't a big factor here. I, I think what's most important for A&M is they try to come away with seven points, not three points on this drive, trailing by 14. The talk all week long here in College Station was about not using the big horse. You got Javorski Lane, third and short, fourth and short. Give it to the big fella. They didn't last week against Oklahoma. Is this an opportunity well, to it, do it right it, here? It's always, it's always a good opportunity, third and short, fourth and short, and on the goal line to give the ball to Lane. And, you know, we talked about Lane turning down media requests, wouldn't do any interviews this week. Let's see if the message got, got through to Coach Franchoni. We'll see right here. 15 consecutive times on third and two or less, or fourth and two and less, Javorski Lane has rushed the football and got the first down or touchdown. Let's see if they make it 16 in a row. Now they're going to go out of the shotgun, which is not the best formation to get to a power running attack. And miscommunication, they throw it out to Goodson. Goodson has the first down, but there's a flag in the backfield. Yeah, both running backs were moving at the snap of the football. Works in Canada. Yeah, it doesn't work in this, in this league. It looked like McGee was trying to get Lane and Goodson to shift. But then as a quarterback, you've got to make sure, you've got to look back and see that both running backs have gotten Illegal set. Shift, Texas A&M. Two players moving at the same time. Five-yard penalty, third down. third down. You know, we hear week in and week out from coaches about quarterbacks managing the game. McGee's going to audible here. And so he gets Lane to move to the right side and Goodson to the, to the left side in a, in a two-back formation. But McGee never looked back to make sure that his backs were set. So they're pushed back five yards as a third and seven. McGee in the shotgun by himself in the backfield. Pass knocked down. Good defensive play. Bo Rude, their big play guy, knocks the pass down. It'll bring up a fourth and seven. Now Bo Rude, his brother Barrett, played middle linebacker for Nebraska a few years ago. A ball hawk. His brother was a ball hawk, and Bo Rude always finds his way to the ball, and that is a big stop right there. AM looking at third and short, plenty of time to take a couple cracks into the end zone. Rude comes up with a deflection, and now the Aggies are going to be forced to try a field goal late here in the first half. And a timeout. Nebraska calls the timeout. 20 seconds remaining here in the first half. With the timeout on the field, let's take a look at our ESPNU All-State Standings Review. Well, you can, you can take care of Auburn right here, and you can take care of Louisville, and everybody else moves up. I mean, that's big for teams like California, USC. You got Texas, Florida, all one-loss teams. And don't forget Notre Dame. See Texas right there at five. They've got their big game tonight in Manhattan, Kansas, taking on Kansas State. With the win, Texas will clinch the Big 12 South, and they will go to the Big 12 championship game on December 2nd. Well, and you look at teams like Florida and Texas, they have the advantage of a championship game that they get into. To you know, Texas can clinch. Florida already has clinched in the SEC for a championship game appearance. But then you look at USC behind Florida and Texas, USC with that schedule strength. Oregon, Cal, Notre Dame, UCLA. And a lot of people think that that one loss team would be USC if they run the table. Lane Newman will attempt a 37 yarder. And he hooks it through. 
So the Aggies, they wanted seven. They have to settle for three. And it's an 11 point Nebraska lead, 21 10. Bill Callahan, his first time ever here at Kyle Field, has never coached or been inside this building until yesterday. Well, his team has a lot of momentum here in November. And if you're going to be playing for the big prizes late, your team has to come up big in November. And the way he's had his team come out here in this football game, playing both on offense and defense, it's a, it's a theme that's a recurring theme here lately. Came out firing against Oklahoma and State and Missouri the last couple weeks, and doing the same today at Kyle Field. Nebraska historically has had great success against Texas A&M. They lead the all-time series 9 to 2. Actually just of those 11 games only two of them have been played here at Kyle Field. Nebraska's won once and lost once here at Kyle Field. Matt Zemanski kicks off. Into the end zone. Touchback ball will be at the 20 yard line. Well Monday night ESPN brings you an NFC South showdown. Tampa Bay Buccaneers take on Steve Smith, former Buck Keyshawn Johnson, and the Carolina Panthers. Is it Monday yet? Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern. Also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Bill Callahan may be interested in that game. The man he used to work for, John Gruden, now the head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Coached against John Gruden in Super Bowl 37. So Zach Taylor, the senior quarterback, takes a knee, and that'll do it for the first half of play. The Nebraska Cornhuskers, they had three consecutive possessions where they scored touchdowns against the Texas A&M Aggies. And riding those 21 points, they have an 11-point lead as they go to the locker room. Now let's go back down in the field and Stacy Dale. Stacy, Coach, what's been the key to your offensive consistency in the first half? I think by and large we have good mix, good balance. You know, Zach did a wonderful job. Our backs are running well, our line's blocking, so we're in rhythm, we're in sync. Defensively, how have you guys managed to keep the Aggie option in check? Well, I think our offense has held them, got them off the field a little bit. We chewed a little clock, and then our defense just took advantage of, of you know, their option game. We defended that well. We defended their no-back series well. But the second half now, that's the big key for us. Okay, thanks, Coach. Eric. Stacy, thank you so much. Well, Bill Callahan in his first trip to Kyle Field looking to get a win. His team looking good. They're up by 11. We'll be joining John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie in our New York studio right after this. Watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Welcome back to College Football on ABC presented by Best Buy. The Texas A&M Aggies. They have been staggered. A little weak at the knees right now. The Nebraska Cornhuskers on top of the Aggies by a score of 21 to 10 after 30 minutes of play. Alongside David Norrie, I'm Eric Collins. Well, this Nebraska Cornhusker offense, they came out firing on all cylinders. They look very good. Three possessions, three touchdowns right in the middle of the first half. Well, the Huskers offensive line has been terrific. They've established a run threat. They've protected Zach Taylor well. And Zach has been very accurate. He's making great decisions. It promotes a real big problem for Texas A&M in the second half. You bring those safeties up, Zach Taylor is going to be able to make some plays down the football field. Right now, Nebraska has a great mix of run and pass working. Yeah, in case you missed any of it, it was equal parts ground game and equal parts passing attack for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. Through 30 minutes of play, it was a lot of good offense, at least for three consecutive possessions. Yeah, getting a great combination of running from Lucky Jackson, you know, Glenn down on the goal line, and then Purify making a catch on the slant. Once again, Glenn, tough running down on the goal line. Peterson with a touchdown catch. And Dennis Franchoni. A lot of problems on his mind right now. Number one, problem number one, how do we slow down the Nebraska offense and how do we slow down that big offensive line? Offensively for Nebraska, 243 yards in the first 30 minutes of play. Not bad. Coming up, making the catch. Kerry Franks with the return. Tries the left side, gets out 
past the 25 to the 28 yard line. Let's go down on the field and Stacy Dale. Stacy. Well, guys, another question for Coach Francioni is how do we score? And I asked him, what adjustments do you make offensively? He said it's not so much adjustments, it's executing. We've had too many three and out situations. We have to get our running backs involved more. But also, guys, look for Chad Schrader and Martellus Bennett to catch in the in the field at, in this half. Thank you, Stacy. Yeah, it's it's going to be uh, difficult times right now for Stephen McGee in this Texas A&M offense. They were knocking at the door late in that first half, and they had to settle for a field goal. Pass a little bit short, intended for Chad Schrader. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. In the first 30 minutes of play, this is what it looked like in numerical form. Now, when you're having success on the ground and throwing the football, it's really tough to go wrong in your play selection. And you know, we heard from Bill Callahan at halftime. You look at the third down conversions. You know, those have been a problem for Texas A&M. But when Stacy Dales visited with Bill Callahan before the half, you know, Coach Callahan talked about that mix of run and pass and the success that the Huskers were having on offense. McGee flips it out. Yeah, the catch is made. Martellus Bennett bobbled it for a moment and then corralled it before going out of bounds. Well, the Aggies like to work off of their option game. They like to establish the run threat with their two talented tailbacks. But you get down 11 points in this game. And this is, we talked about how important, Eric, this game is for Nebraska. This is very important for the Aggies in terms of getting into an impressive bowl game. And, you know, with that Texas game looming in two weeks, this game this afternoon, becomes even more critical if you want to be playing after the new year. Looking to convert their first third down. McGee flips it out, passes complete. First down and more, Chris Alexander, the fullback, comes out of the backfield and makes his first grab of the game. There's so many defenses key on the tailback for Texas A&M when Texas gets in an eye set. And that leaves Alexander, the fullback, as a viable weapon in the pass game. And that was not an easy throw by McGee. McGee had to throw that ball out to the wide side of the field, put it right on the numbers for Alexander. So fresh set of downs. Ball now in the 44. Take the handoff. McGee wants a bunch. Flag comes flying down, and McGee takes it himself. If this holds up, he's got enough for a first down, but we'll have to figure this one out. Good scramble for McGee, but a flag in the field. Holding, number 64 of the offense, 10-yard penalty, first down. Kirk Elder, the junior from Klein, Texas, called with the hold. Now, Stephen McGee was looking for a ball over the top down the field to carry Franks. And carry Franks on a hook and go at the top of the screen. Let's take a look. And you're going to see this move set up at the top of the screen, but played perfectly by the secondary of the Cornhuskers. A safety and a corner keeping their depth. That was Courtney Grixby. McGee, another bounce pass. That's about the third pass that skipped at the ankles of Chad Schrader. Well, and, and Dennis Franchoni looks out on the field and says, that does not look like the Stephen McGee that I know. But that's what a pass rush can do. You got ends like Carricker and Moore closing things down. Barry Turner's had a big game. And then all of a sudden, that clock that you're supposed to have in your head as a quarterback, you know, that, that, that gives you a feel for the timing in the pocket, that clock gets off a bit. And, and Stephen McGee has forced a couple throws early. Play fake. McGee again with time flips it out. His tight end Bennett now with four catches on the game. Pick up of about ten. It'll bring up a third and ten. Well, I like this game planning by Texas A&M. Of course, the the holding call you know, slowed the Aggies down on this drive. But I like that the play calling opening up the second half, airing things out a little bit. 
you know, with, with, when you're running against this front seven for Nebraska and, and the going's tough, you got to throw the ball to loosen things up between the tackles for your tailbacks. McGee steps out of the first tackle, still on his feet, throws, and the first down is converted. Goodson with the catch out of the backfield. How about that? Making something out of nothing for McGee. Yard gain and it moves the sticks. Now you talk about a heroic play at the quarterback position. Third and long, his team trailing by 11 points. These were the type of plays last year against Texas that really put McGee on the map. And a great job by Goodson helping his quarterback out on the sideline. To the ground they go, and the speedster Goodson, freshman out of Houston, picks up seven yards. Well, you look at Mike Goodson, and you throw on the film from last week against Oklahoma, the runs that he made against that Sooner defensive outfit. I mean, that's one of the ultimate tests in college football, playing against the quickness and speed of the Oklahoma Sooners. And I think Mike Goodson has served his calling card. He is one of the most explosive young backs in college football. Little pitch out to Goodson. And Goodson breaks contain and gets back close to the line of scrimmage. That could have been a real negative play. Stuart Bradley was in pursuit. Now it's the speed of Goodson that turns a bad play at least into a positive gain. That's Stuart Bradley, number 34, the outside linebacker, is really going to have penetration. And they've got this option play solved, but look at the speed by Goodson. He gets around Bradley and, and picks up a yard or two. Nebraska has done a great job defensively solving the option of Texas A&M in this football game. Third down, they need to get to the 31. McGuin has his pass batted down. Steve Octavian didn't even play a week ago against Missouri. Another big play from his linebacker spot. Yeah, and that's a terrific play by Octavian. This Nebraska linebacker group. Really a lot of speed across the board, and Octavian's going to come free. And a nice job to realize that he's not going to make it to the McGee in time. Get your arms up. Try to disrupt the throwing lanes. Well, on fourth down and four, instead of going for a long field goal over 50 yards, they're going to go for it. Maybe they won't. Little pooch kick. McGee kicks it down, and this is going to be a good decision. As the ball is going to be down at the two-yard line. Stephen McGee, his second punt of the season, 33-yarder, and it's down at the two-yard line. So terrible opening field position for Nebraska. The 12th man getting fired up here at Kyle Field, trying to make a difference. The Nebraska Cornhuskers backed up at their own two-yard line, trying to get it away from the goal line. Taylor wants to throw from his own end zone. Flips it out to Lucky. And Lucky gets out across the five. Melvin Bullitt, the senior, with the stop after a gain of four. Now, Lucky is an exceptional tailback coming out of the backfield and catching the football. And this is a pressure situation. Can't make a mistake. And the ball's going to be delivered behind Lucky just effortlessly. Spins back towards the goal line. Makes a catch with soft hands. You love backs like that when you're playing quarterback. Lucky stays in the game. Lined up about a yard into the end zone. He has the football. Takes his time. Absorbs the hit and gets out to the eight. It'll bring up a third down and three.
not an easy place to play football. Complete to Peterson and a first down all the way to the 25. 17, Todd Peterson. You saw how difficult it is to call out the cadence and they get the first down on third and four. Well, you watch Zach Taylor. He's equally accurate standing in the pocket or on the move. And as he rolled to his right, just a smooth delivery to the outside. You know, there are not many college quarterbacks that can throw the ball as accurately as Zach Taylor can when he's on the move. Beautiful ball to Peterson to move the chains. And just a huge play for the momentum of Nebraska to get it away from their own goal line. Jackson back in the game. The junior from Horn Lake, Mississippi picks up a couple. You know, Texas A&M really missed a big opportunity, a three and out. The crowd behind this team early in the third quarter and the Huskers answered the challenge. And this is a bit of a throwback that we're seeing this afternoon. The Huskers up front on offense, really a bruising ground attack, creating some opportunities for their quarterback in the pass game. And defensively, they've shut down an explosive offensive group for the Aggies. Jackson again with the carry. Lunges out across the 30 to the 31. Another third down for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Yeah, this is a big down for Texas A&M. And they're rotating some safeties up near the line of scrimmage in the second quarter. They're continuing to get some of those safeties involved in the run game. Greg is the free safety. A young player, only a sophomore, but does a great job of getting this defense lined up. Calls the signals, really is the quarterback of the secondary. Pitch out, Brandon Jackson. Looks left side, close to first down yards. It's gonna depend on the spot. And the spot doesn't look particularly good right now. No, if you're that, a Nebraska fan. That, that, was, that was not a favorable spot for Nebraska. So they're going to have to measure it. They're going to bring the sticks out and see if Brandon Jackson had enough. Yeah, Jackson did a nice job of squaring his shoulder pads, had a nice pad level. And it looked to me like he got closer to the 34-yard line than the officials are giving him credit. Oof. No choice here. Callahan's going to have to send the punt team on. Well, let's watch let's watch the replay here just a simple power pitch power football a trademark of Nebraska and boy it looked like he got a lot closer to the 34 yard line than the mark indicated so the punt team will have to come on Dan Titchener will punt it away to Chad Schrader playing in his final home game with Kyle Field senior out of Austin's Westlake High School. And keep in mind, officials in college football now, every play is review. You don't have to ask for a review. They're constantly looking at every play, and it might have been an opportunity for the boys upstairs to take a second look. Schrader with a chance to return it. Schrader brought down hard at the 35-yard line. So both teams had a crack at it so far here in the third quarter. Both teams come up empty. Second go around. Let's see what Stephen McGee can make happen. The Aggies down by 11, looking for a spark. ESPN's College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy. Thousands of possibilities. Get yours. The Nissan Titan, proud presenter of the 2006 Heisman. And Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life. The power to help you succeed.
Well, there is a large George H.W. Bush influence here at Texas A&M, and why not? He is the first fan of Texas A&M football. He was actually here last night watching both the men's and women's basketball team play just across the street, and he is here today for the football game between Texas A&M and Nebraska. He was actually down on the field, part of the pregame festivity. Pass is complete. Big gainer on first down for Texas A&M. The tight end, Martellus Bennett, continues to impress. He's now got six catches, a gain of 25 on that one. He may have paid the price. He's still down on the field. Well, Stephen McGee paid the price. And when you talk to his coaches, one of the first qualities they mention is his toughness as a quarterback. And McGee sits in. I mean, that is a beautiful ball with a defender hanging on his back. And a pretty solid catch down the field by Bennett. How many miles did he get in and Damakin Sue on the right side arrived just as McGee let go of the football. Well, Martellus Bennett still down on the field being attended to. And while we have a moment, let's go back to Matt Weiner for a Sports Center in game update. All right, Eric, Joe Paterno not in the stadium today at Happy Valley with Temple taking on Penn State. Not a problem. Tony Hunt, 164 yards on just 16 carries. He has three of the Lion touchdowns. That's now 41-0 in the Irish. About to get to the third quarter at Air Force up by 24. Thank you, man. That is a strange sight seeing a Penn State team and Joe Paterno not being on the sidelines. Last time he missed a game was 1977. Little wraparound handoff to Goodson. And Goodson trying to use that speed and get outside. He's wrapped up and brought down by Tier Green. And this Aggie offense has you know, so many looks to it. It's a multiple offense. You know, Stephen McGee can line up an empty backfield, go with two backs, multiple tight ends and wide receivers. And I think Nebraska has done a great job defensively, not only solving all those personnel groupings and formations, but but they've also done a great job of not allowing Goodson to break off a couple long runs and big plays for the Aggies. McGee goes one way, throws the other. Pass is complete, not much doing. Terry Franks with the catch, but he's dropped immediately by Courtney Grixby. Now, Grixby, Grixby has been a, a just a, a solid force at cornerback for Nebraska throughout the season. And he's been a rock in the secondary. And these cornerbacks have done a great job not only reacting to balls in the, in the passing game to the outside in the short zones, but they've been great force run defenders as well, coming up on the option play and taking the tailback on the option pitch. This may be four down territory for Texas A&M. Maybe they have two plays to work with. We've seen them before in this neck of the woods. Go for it on fourth down. Let's see what they choose on third. Passes go incomplete. Latidrick Riley, the senior, had it and then dropped it. Now it's fourth down and seven in decision time. Well, Riley, you, you can see Riley was disappointed. He thought he should have come up with that catch, but but McGee's got to give him a better ball. And and we've seen throughout the afternoon on a couple of the easy throws, McGee has been off target. And he's got great protection, sits in. This should just be pitch and catch. And not a very good ball. And you'd like to see a bit of a, a tighter spiral out of McGee on that. And of course, it was thrown behind Riley. Not a, not a good play by McGee on a play that AM had to have. Are you surprised they're punting here, David? Well, yeah, I, I, I am surprised somewhat just because, you know, in the red zone, they continue to come up empty time after time. And that goes back to that big game last week against Oklahoma. With the punt into the end zone and the touchback, it's a net of just 17 yards on that punt. When we come back, Nebraska with the football. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Welcome back, everyone, to college football presented by Best Buy. The Nebraska Cornhuskers, middle part of that first half, they had three possessions in a row that resulted in touchdowns. They've been quiet ever since, but Dennis Franchoni's guys They've been quiet as well. We have been scoreless so far in the second half. 
Just a moment ago, Dennis Franchoni had a chance to go for it. Fourth and seven on the 37. They chose to punt it. I think the fourth and seven was the, was the decision maker for him. Fourth and three, fourth and four, they go for it. The problem is you kick the ball into the end zone and you lose field position. That was actually a punt of, a gain them a net of 17 yards. They're on the 37 and they put it on the 20, so. Full start, number 85 on the offense. Five yard penalty, first down. J.B. Phillips. The junior call for the penalty, it'll march him back five. That's the fourth penalty of the day for Nebraska. Danger time for Texas A&M. Already down 11 points. If Nebraska scores here, they're running out of time. And once again, there's trouble figuring things out. And the senior, Zach Taylor, has to go over to Bill Callahan and talk over what they want to do. Call a timeout. Their first of the second half. Well, Dennis Franchoni showing some real patience. You know, in the last possession, they decide to punt on fourth and seven. And it's hard to argue that in that situation on fourth and seven. You know, in the third quarter, still five minutes to go. You're only down two scores. A field goal, a touchdown, and a two-point conversion. The prior possession, a quick, a quick punt, a little quick kick. That they downed inside the five. And you know, Franchoni was very patient last week against Oklahoma, and he was patient late in the fourth quarter. And we'll see how this plays out. But you know, I, I, I think Dennis Franchoni's really still showing some confidence in his defense that they can make plays and pin Nebraska back, force them to punt. We talk about patience in Dennis Franchoni. How much patience will they have with him? So far in his tenure down at Texas A&M, this is his fourth year. He still does not have a win against Oklahoma, Texas, or Nebraska. 0 and 8. Yeah, and those are the three teams that the Aggies finish off their regular season slate with this year and, and you, know, you look at Dennis Franchoni no no surprise to everybody he was really on the hot seat coming into the season and you know they, they have an impressive record a close loss last week but you know, then you look at the, the non-conference wins Citadel Louisiana Lafayette Army Louisiana Tech that record's padded a little bit lucky takes the swing pass and is thrown down rudely by Melvin Bullitt the senior from Garland, Texas, wrapped him up and threw him down after a gain of three. A bullet is the senior statesman in a, in a secondary that was relatively young coming into the season. And if there's a secondary player that can really come up and smack you, it's Bullet. And he brings the helmet and the leather, capable of making the big hit. Taylor. Brought down. Good defensive pressure applied by Kellen Hurd. Loss of two. Well, Texas A&M is missing their top defensive lineman, Red Bryant. They missed the game two weeks ago. The Aggies game against in Missouri, and then the last week was only able to go sparingly against Oklahoma. Kellen Hurd has stepped in, and that's a big play by the redshirt freshman. Injured Cornhusker in the backfield. So a timeout on the field. Being helped off is Matt Slauson, sophomore. And this Texas A&M defense really delivering for Dennis Franchoni on the decision to punt. And the Texas A&M, the one thing you can say about the Aggies this year, they've been in, in every football game they've played. And Dennis Franchoni has, has been able to keep his team close. And they lost one late last week against Oklahoma, but they've also come up big and come from behind late in football games more than once this year. Number 76, Lydon Murtha, has come off the bench to replace Slauson at right tackle. Third and 14. Taylor keeps it himself. Not going to get there. Brought down at the 23. Bullet again on the stop, helped by Jordan Peterson. Yeah, Kellen Hurd again with the pressure in the backfield. 
against Taylor. That was an impressive set of downs for number 91, Kellen Hurd. Defensive tackle once again gets penetration and flushes Zach Taylor. And Zach Taylor not trying to be the hero, pick up the first down, just getting his team out from the shadow of their own goal post. Another smart play by the senior quarterback. Kishner. Not a particularly good kick, gets a good roll though. And it's going to bound inside the 40 to the 35 yard line. Wasn't particularly pretty, but it's effective. Let's take a look at today's Big 12 top stories. The Texas Longhorns, they got a big game tonight on ABC in Manhattan, Kansas, with a win over Kansas State, and they will clinch the Big 12 South. And who would have thought Dan McCarney was stepping down? And obviously a tough season for Iowa State, but coming off two campaigns where really looked like they were going to be the team from the North Division late in November the last two years to get into the Big 12 championship game. They weren't able to seal the deal in either one of those games, games where they were favored, and now Dan McCarney, big surprise that he's out at Iowa State. Hand off to Lane. And the J train is brought down close to the line of scrimmage. He's had a hard time getting started so far today. He's got just seven yards on the ground. And if you're going to stop Lane, you got to get into him low. You got to get into him early before he picks up some steam, and you got to wrap him up. And, you know, easier said than done, trying to wrap up the J train. That's like trying to wrap up a small SUV. <laughs> you know, it's just, I mean, he, is a, he is a beast. Nimble, though, he's the punter on his high school team. Lufkin high. McGee to the sky. Has a man pass too high, looking for Irvin Taylor. This isn't the McGee that we expected to see. He's been a little bit more inaccurate than we expected. Well, and, and they've also taken McGee out of his comfort zone a bit by asking him to pass the ball you know, on first and second downs more than they normally would. That was another opportunity there with Taylor. Taylor ran a nice route on the outside, gave him a nice look. And you know, he wanted McGee to shade him back towards the sideline. And again, McGee overshot him a bit. Third down at 10. Delayed handoff to Goodson. The speedster knocked around, stays on his feet, breaks a tackle in open field. Can they catch him? Pushed out of bounds at the 10. A touchdown saving tackle by Bo Rude, but not before a huge gain of 54 yards. Well, Nebraska had Goodson dead to rights, stopped in front of the chains, and how about the effort at number three? Might have hurt his thumb at the end of this play. And Bo Rude just running him down inside the 10-yard line. He is truly one of the special gifted backs in college football. Oh, tremendous move to get himself in the secondary. The Aggies beat out the USC Trojans on him. Big time recruit. Javorski Lane looking for something. After a gain of one, he's dropped at the 10. Lance Brandenburg jumped on his back and brings him down. Lane showing some of that frustration after the play. He has just not been able to get going, but here's the end of the play. And it looked like he hurt his, his thumb. Ooh. Might have got it caught up on a cameraman there. But he was favoring one of his thumbs as he as he got up after the play. Like it was that left hand. He's still not on the field for Texas A&M. McGee gets it to the big fella. The fullback, Chris Alexander, lays the blow, and he's down. It's going to be short of first down yards. <laughs> Pick up of seven, it'll be third and short. Now, when you're a cornerback, sometimes you're called upon to make plays that that aren't very savory. Oh. I mean, that is not a fun job trying to meet Chris Alexander out of the backfield. And, an, and a nice throw by McGee. McGee took a little bit off that ball, 
And as a quarterback, when you're throwing the ball outside, especially to fullbacks and tailbacks, you want to put a little handle on it. Nice catchable ball from McGee there. Goodson's back in. You'd assume they have to go to Lane here on third and two. But Lane now out of the backfield. And they want to throw for it. McGee lofts it up. Incomplete. David, third and two, and they swing Javorski Lane out of the backfield. Well, and it, and it shades of last week. You have big series of down against the Sooners on third and goal down at the two-yard line. Dennis Franchoni decided to throw the ball instead of give the ball to Lane. Here you have third and two in a big situation. You know, late in the third quarter, again they throw for it. And one of the special things about this A&M offense is they can spread you out and throw it, but they can also line up in an eye back set and pound at you, and you wonder why they're going from the shotgun there, third and two. Lane Newman attempts the 20-yarder. It's good. And it trims the lead to eight. Yeah, a little bit of a surprise play call. After all the ruckus this week about not giving the ball to the big fella on third and two, they don't do it again here. Well, and, 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 and the play call, I, I don't like the formation. I mean, if you play action pass down there on third and two, I play action out of an eye set where you fake the ball to lane and you get that reaction from the linebackers in the secondary. But to line up in a shotgun situation there, it's not a power running formation. And I think you kind of tip your cards a bit on the play call. I mean, here's third and two. You're sitting in the shotgun and very tough. Any coach will tell you that when you're going from the shotgun in a short yardage situation, you don't get the downhill action from the backfield, a tailback and a fullback, and the sledgehammer type of feel in between the tackles. And I think that Dennis Franchoni there tipped his cards to the Nebraska defense. We saw that last week against Oklahoma, and, and we heard the Kyle Field fans here be after that play. They were not very happy about it either. Kickoff will not be run out. Marlon Lucky takes an E in the end zone, and the touchback will put the ball on the 20-yard line with 10 ticks remaining in the third quarter. Well, tonight at 7 Eastern time on ESPN2, the Tennessee Volunteers, they try and knock off the only SEC team to make it this far without a conference loss. Talk about the Arkansas Razorback. College football primetime on ESPN2 tonight. College football lives here. Folks, if you haven't seen Darren McFadden run, He's an electric performer out of the backfield for Arkansas. Fadden and also a couple other skill athletes for the Hogs that can light it up. What a year they're having. That'll do it for quarter number three. We're looking forward to a fantastic finish. The fourth quarter is just around the bend. Our presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC station. Tied up at seven after one quarter of play. Nebraska opened up a little bit with 14 points in the second quarter, but they were held to a goose egg in the third. And we have an eight-point game right now. The Cornhuskers trying to clinch the Big 12 North title and get to the Big 12 championship game December 2nd at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. But their offense has been stagnant here in the second half. Cody Glenn with the carry, and Glenn picks up a hard one yard. And you saw the flyover earlier today, right before today's game, and this is the crew who made it to the stadium for the fourth quarter. Well done, boys. Well, that was something to see that pregame. Flying just over the rim of Kyle Field. Taylor to throw. 
looking for Marlon Lucky, and that pass is nowhere near. Well, David, something's going right for the Texas A&M defense. They were really gassed in the first half by Zach Taylor at Nebraska. But here in the second half, it's a totally different ball game. Well, we keep talking about, about and reflecting back on that Oklahoma game a week ago after the Sooners scored twice on their opening two drives. You know, A&M got some safeties involved. They played with a better spirit and intensity. Only gave up three points the remainder of the game to the Sooners. And they're starting to buckle down here in the second half against this Cornhusker offense. Taylor under pressure, throws it high and out of bounds. Looking for Maurice Purify. Nothing doing. So the punt team will have to come on after another three and out. Yeah, Brock Newton. They call him the whip, but he's a glorified safety. He'll come from the left side of the screen. And that was a well-timed blitz. Gary Darnell, the defensive coordinator, pushing all the right buttons here in the second half for a and &M. So that's now five consecutive fruitless possessions for Nebraska. Schrader calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 43. Look at the drive chart for the Aggies. Yeah, there's been a big problem offensively for Dennis Franchoni, settling for field goals instead of touchdowns in the red zone. And that's been a problem the last couple weeks for the Aggies. McGee keeps it. And he's wrapped up after a pickup of one. Adam Carriker talked about him all afternoon long in on the stop. Now you look at his frame, 6'6", 295 pounds. I think he's the best defensive end, the best pro prospect at defensive end for Nebraska since Grant Wistrom back in the late 90s. And you look at that, you know, the size and the range, a big long neck, and he's a terror against the run. Has the ability to rush the passer. He's really the complete package when you talk about NFL prospects. McGee gets it out, passes incomplete, looking for Schrader. The Schrader dropped it before he could run with it. Let's go back to the studio and Matt Weiner. Eric, time for a singular ESPN All-America Player of the Week update on Michigan. Steve Breston having a huge day against the Hoosiers. 231 yards of total offense. Second career 100-yard receiving day. He's caught a touchdown pass and run one back to the paint via the punt return. Text vote to 87654 on your singular wireless telephone to vote. Thank you, Matt. That's just whetting our appetite for next week's game of the year. Ohio State and Michigan from the Horseshoe in Columbus. Third down, McGee keeps it with room in the open field. One man to beat, McGee. And now Texas A&M knocking on the door. They're going to go for two and try and tie up Bill Callahan's bunch. Now we talked about being option sound against Texas A&M. Nobody takes the quarterback. You cannot forget about the quarterback. And McGee does a terrific job. Let's see if he stays in bounds here. Oh, yeah. He got the ball inside the pylon. And Nebraska neglected the quarterback. Tremendous athletic play. Now going for two. McGee in trouble. Nowhere to run, and he's dropped. So the Aggies will have to settle for six. 
Heck of an athletic play by Stephen McGee. Calls his own number, and number seven comes up lucky. Now Stephen McGee, he's the hero right now as he brings Texas A&M within two. A 57-yard touchdown run on an option play. That was a long time coming. Not a lot of room for McGee throughout the course of this afternoon in the option game, but he finally sprung one. Touchback, Nebraska will start on the 20. And now for our best buy playbook. David, what do you have? Well, we talk about being option sound defensively. Let's go ahead and run it here. And this is an option out of the shotgun formation. Keep on running to go ahead and I'll, we'll take a couple extra yards here and just freeze it right here. Look at the responsibilities. Everybody has a responsibility, but nobody takes the quarterback. That was an assignment breakdown. And McGee with the speed to exploit it. So the Cornhuskers, their lead trimmed to just two. They start on the ground at this possession and Lucky barrels out to the 24-yard line. Mark Dodge on the tackle. In the first half, it was all Nebraska. 243 yards. They've mustered just 40 since intermission. Well, and give Gary Darnell some credit, the defensive coordinator for Texas A&M. Taking a page out of his book from a week ago against Oklahoma. Lucky, still on his feet. Out across the 35 to the 37. Good vision there for the sophomore from Hollywood, California. And tough work up front by the offensive line for Nebraska. We talked about the improvement over a year ago. This, this team, the running game, was virtually non-existent a season ago, and they've really stepped things up, averaging about 90 yards more per game, over two yards more per rush in the 2006 season. And this is where you get the running game going to win a game and get into a title match in the Big 12 championship game. Again, on the ground, lucky. This time, not much doing. Mark Dodge with the tackle. Stacy, what's going on down in the field? Well, Eric, I've been standing behind the Aggie defense, and they are incredibly fired up. Defensive line coach Stan Egan just corralled his players during that last offensive sequence. He challenged them, do not take a playoff. He said, do you want to know how we win this fourth quarter? We finish, and we are the last man standing. He said, they haven't played four quarters. We have. Get it done, guys. Yeah, well, if anyone's getting tired, this 12th man is helping him out. Kyle Field is electric right now. Hand off, first man through. Lucky, tripped up. It'll bring up a third down in about five, maybe six. Pick up of two. Melvin Bullitt shot the gap and knocked down Lucky. Now the Aggies, we talked about the safeties getting up and getting involved against the run. They're taking some chances on the outside. Only a matter of time before Zach Taylor takes a shot down the field. Man-to-man -man coverage on the outside by these cornerbacks for the Aggies. Taylor under pressure gets it off, incomplete. Again intended for Purify, and it's knocked away by Jordan Peterson. Now this time the Aggies bring Brock Newton, the whip off the weak side. And how about Peterson man to man? Just draped on Purify. And Purify on the out route. You see Zach Taylor sitting in, taking the hit from Newton. But Purify, not a very good route, establishing a deep threat before he broke it off on the out cut. Schrader back deep. They'll have room from the 15. And he's dropped. 42-yard punt, no return. Dane Todd on the stop. 
Well, when we come back, the super freshman, Mike Goodson, will get a chance to show what he's made out of. Goodson and the Aggies with the ball when we come back. ESPN's College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy. Thousands of possibilities. Get yours. Cadillac. Check out the Cadillac Navigation event going on now. Cadillac, life, liberty, and the pursuit. Singular, raising the bar. And Allstate, are you in good hands? Reveille on cue, getting fired up, getting her dander up. Texas A&M down by just two. Got to make this comeback worthwhile. First man through, Lane with the carry. Picks up a couple on first down. Boy, he can move the pile, can he? 285. I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we got Javorski on the scale after the game and he tipped over three bills. Big fella. Yeah, I did. <laughs> People compare him to the bus. I think he's bigger than the bus. I think he's a double decker. We talked to offensive coordinator Les Koenig earlier this week, and he said, How much do you guys have enlisted at? You said 274. He said, That's generous. <laughs> Second and six, McGee keeps fires incomplete. Looking for Riley. Third down at six. And when Coach Koenig said generous, he meant generous. Janice, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're giving him credit for being a little bit leaner than Coach Koenig thought he was. One of the more prominent short yardage goal line backs in the country. And, and what a change up these two backs give you. Goodson going to set up here in this third down situation. Looked like you're going to split him out in the slot. McGee over the middle, man wide open. First down and more for Riley. Out across the 50. Big gain for the Aggies. Out across the 50, but concern in the backfield for Texas A&M as Stephen McGee is down. And that was a that was an impressive play by McGee as he looked to swing the ball out first to Goodson and then he comes over the middle to Riley excellent throwing decision and McGee showing the ability to come to second and third choices in his progression. That is Corey Clark who is down and in pain on the 12 yard line. So concerned still in the backfield for Texas A&M. With a timeout on the field, let's use this time to go back to the studio and Matt Weiner. Matt, what's going on in Tucson, Arizona? Well, Cal is trailing at Tucson, Arizona. Remember, a couple of BCS top 10 teams have already lost. Nate Longshore picked off by Anton Kaysen, who takes it back 39 yards the other way. 14 on answered, but Cal has just hit a field goal to cut the lead to 424-20 there. Florida trailing South Carolina at home. Crazy scores here on the Saturday afternoon. And I have a feeling that we're going to see a few more of those games down the stretch. This is going to be a year where that second team that gets into the BCS final, the championship game, there's going to be a lot of arguing who deserves to be in that game. The big fella, Jaworski Lane, looking for the home run ball, and it's caught by Schrader. Ability. Javorski Lane with a 44 yard pass play to Chad Trader. Now Javorski Lane, he's going to get outside and get the pitch. And it's a pretty nice throw by the big fella. First, he's got to get that 285 pound set. And then what a play coming back to the football by Schrader. Secondary outran it. First and goal. Let's see if they give it to the big fella to finish off this drive. 
First man through, Alexander, the fullback, down to the one. Ball comes loose late, but they're going to say he's down. Dennis Franchoni making some decisions that weren't popular with this crowd in the third quarter. Punting the ball on two occasions inside Nebraska's 40-yard line. He had the patience and the confidence in his defense. Those decisions are starting to look a lot more solid here in the fourth quarter. You figure they got to go to lane here. They do, and the big fella with the touchdown is 19th of the year. And AM with their first lead of the game. Javorski Lane gives Dennis Franchoni's bunch their first lead of the game. They're up by four. And I think they're going to go for two now, David. Well, I, I don't know if you go for two here. I, I don't, I'm not sure they're going to go for two here. There's no need to go for two. You know, seven and I don't know if they're chasing points from earlier in the football game, but 728 to go. You kick the extra point here and go up by five points. Going up by six points doesn't do anything for you. out of the gun gets it off complete martellus bennett with the grab may have been a dubious call but if, at least they get it make it an extra do if you make it you always like the extra point but that's not the correct call when you look at points in the fourth quarter when you go for one when you go for two because you don't pick up a lot going up by six as opposed to five and you always want to take the point when you can get it unless there's a reason that you go for two points. I haven't seen that call in a long time, but you know, Dennis Franchoni right now, seems like all the decisions he's making are really coming up roses. I mean, Eric, you look back into the third quarter and, and there were people who were booing here at Kyle Field. Some of the decisions on punts and not giving the ball to Javorski Lane on a key third and two down near the goal line. But how about the option pass from Javorski Lane? Great play by Schrader coming back to make that catch. And now they give it to the J train. Javorski saying, where was that last week? And a pretty darn good ball by Stephen McGee. Utilizing the young talent, Bennett, the tight end on the two-point conversion. AM, their first two possessions of the second half, two punts. Last three possessions, a field goal and two touchdowns. They're on a 17 nothing run to take a six-point lead. Well, time permitting, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post-game report. Going Craig, John, and Doug will have scores and highlights from around the country. Already a big upset. The Auburn Tigers, losers against the Georgia Bulldogs. Big game down in the SEC. Hey, you looked at one lost teams. Auburn had wins against LSU and Florida in the top six. Tommy Tuberville can wave goodbye to any chances of being in the BCS title game after that loss this afternoon. Nebraska's had the ball four times in the second half. They've had to punt all four times. Marlon Lucky, gain of six, maybe seven on first down. All right, what would work well? they got to figure out some answers against this AM and defense. Well, you look at the, the two losses for Nebraska in the Big 12, similar deal. I, uh, against Oklahoma State, they had a 16-0 lead. That evaporated. Oklahoma State really got things going offensively in the second half. And, and let's not forget Bill Callahan and this Husker team, they had a, a lead on Texas in the fourth quarter, and that evaporated. Lucky brought down at the line of scrimmage. Middle backer Justin Warren in on the stop. Well, and, and a big, a big difference maker for Texas A&M in the second half. And it calls by Gary Darnell getting the secondary involved at the line of scrimmage and not just sneaking those safeties up into run support areas, 
But Darnell's been successful bringing blitzes. And it's, it's not only helped with the run, but it's also created a lot of pressure in the pocket against Zach Taylor, the quarterback. Complete big play. That's going to be enough for a first down. Todd Peterson with the grab. They may have to measure, but I think he's got enough for the first down. Well, that was a heck of a play by Peterson. This is not going to be an easy reception. Zach Taylor facing some more pressure in the pocket. The ball comes out quick. And that was a back pocket catch by Peterson. And Zach Taylor got the ball on his numbers quickly, but Peterson not only made the catch, he secured it. Felt contact right after the reception. Taylor, flushed in the pocket, and he goes down. Kellen Hurd continues to play a magnificent game. Well, the Aggies are missing Red Bryant. We talked about it. Played sparingly over the last two weeks, and Hurd has answered the bell. You talk about defensive linemen getting off of blocks. 91 has played a terrific half of football. He's got three sacks today. Pass is complete. Out to the 35-yard line goes Terrence Nunn. Don't look now, folks, but it's starting to get late here in this game. Well, Only five minutes to play. Well, and, and with the new rules and the clock starting after change of possession that makes four and a half minutes look a lot less when you look at Nebraska two timeouts left if they get close here and not pick up the first down if they get close to the 40 yard line you might see Bill Callahan go to a four down status Taylor with time has a man did he stay in bounds yes he did Peterson with another grab When receivers practice in the preseason, during the season, they don't just run the routes that are called, but they also work drills to help quarterbacks out. Now, once a quarterback breaks the pocket, receivers work to gain separation. Peterson, another great play, helping his quarterback to the outside, creating some open space along the sideline. Taylor. Again, goes down. Heard. No, it's Michael Bennett with the sack. These Aggie defenders, they're pinning their ears back right now and just attacking Taylor. And this time the pressure came from a defensive end, and he's going to come clean on Zach Taylor. This pressure's coming from the front side. Usually a quarterback, especially a quarterback with the experience of a Taylor, you pick that up with your peripheral vision. Never saw number 11. Plenty of time. Flag flies in the direction of holding. Taylor takes off and is crunched at the 45-yard line. This is going to be a big call. Cornhuskers do not want to move back another 10 yards. And the flag was dropped back in the area where the referee looking at a holding call. Holding number 59 on the offense. 10 yard penalty, second down. The center, Brett Byford, called for the hold. And Brett Byford, a guy who stepped in for Kurt Mann. Let's go ahead and freeze it right here. Helping out. Giving some help to Mike Huff, but stepped in for man after the first game of the season. Has played pretty well. Pretty tough call right there. Five penalties now on Bill Callahan's team. Second and 26. Yikes. Intercepted! 
Captain! Mark Dodge with the football. Returns it all the way to the 29, and things are looking great for the Aggies. This place is going nuts. Bill Callahan, welcome to Kyle Field. The Aggies looking for more when we come back. Texas A&M on top of Nebraska by 6, 250 remaining. And yeah, Zach Taylor looking at a second and long. Let's go ahead and roll it. Linebackers are going to drop deep. They're going to drop deep out into the intermediate and deep routes. And go ahead and freeze it right there. There's Mark Dodge. And he's reading the eyes of Zach Taylor. Taylor trying to fit the dig route in, a deep square in. And what a story, Dodge. 25-year-old. Mark Dodge served in the U.S. Army for four years after high school, and today, on Veterans Day, in front of the Corps of Cadets, all he's done, 15 tackles and an interception late here in the fourth quarter. How about that for Mark Dodge? Let's see if the Aggies offensively can make it worthwhile. Goodson can't stay in bounds. It'll stop the clock after a pickup of a couple. And where was Mark Dodge? You know, well documented. 2001, 9-11, doing some paperwork at the Pentagon when one of the hijacked planes hit the Pentagon. A hero that day, helped with the relief efforts and the rescue efforts. A big gaping, gaping hole in the side of the Pentagon, and he has become a football hero at Kyle Field. Second and eight. Hand off to the up back. And Lane. Not much doing. He is brought down. All right. Timeout is called, and we'll take it with him. Going to bring up a third down and about six when we come back. Nebraska needs a stop. Welcome back, everyone. Take a look now at our Pacific Life Game Summary. This is what you missed if you're just catching us right now. Fourth quarter action. Stephen McGee making it a game. Quarterback option keeps it. 57-yard touchdown run. All of a sudden, we got a game. It's even more of a game. When Javorski Lane, little halfback option, throws it to Schrader, who catches it and sets up a lane touchdown. Two-point conversion, and that gives us the score we have right now. A&M on top of Nebraska by six. This lead was in jeopardy, but Mark Dodge just moments ago intercepts the ball from Zach Taylor and gives it back to Stephen McGee and AM and m trying to run this game out. And Nebraska, one timeout left. a and m probably going to keep the ball on the ground here. Still not a lock. Six-point game. a and m trying to get into field goal position. And McGee going the wrong way. Trying to get it on the corner. He's brought down at the 24. Nebraska, they have a timeout to stop the clock, and they use it at the two-minute mark. Well, and that's, that's the proper use of the timeouts here. There's going to be a third down coming up. No timeouts left for the Huskers, but plenty of time. What it comes down to here is can A&M either pick up a first down or can they get a field goal attempt and make that field goal to make it a two-score game? And the, and the play calling here is going to be interesting. You put the ball up, you risk the turnover. Do you think there's a chance they're not going to go for the field goal? Well, the longest field goal that the that AM has hit this year is 39 yards. This really takes them a little bit out of their comfort range if you go for the field goal. If they went for the field goal, which it looks like they will. It would be about a 43-yard field goal, maybe 42. Lane Newman with the field goal would make this a nine-point lead for AM, which would basically be Katie bar the door. And if Newman misses, you got pretty good field position for Nebraska coming back, back down the field. 
they are going to go for the field goal. Do you think this is a good call? Well, I think it's a good call here because you don't gain much going for it. You know, go punting the ball away and you go for it on fourth down. I think it's you, know, you have a better shot to hit this field goal. And keep in mind, the longest field goal for the Aggies, 39 yards. This would be a best on the season. Newman's already made two so far today. This would be a 42-yarder. Block the Cornhuskers stay away from it, and they still have life. Well, that's what they needed, and the Cornhuskers are still in this game. A 42 yarder. This is a, a distance, a very makeable distance in the college game. Aggies, not a lot of success throughout the season on field goals between 40 and 50 yards. I think it was the big fella, Barry Turner, number 99, who yeah, got a hit on it. I think that was number 99. Getting the arm up. Actually, that was Zach Potter. That was Zach Potter, number 98. All right, here we go. The senior, Zach Taylor, looking for something. Throws late and out of bounds. This is what is on the line. Nebraska, should they win this game, they will clinch the Big 12 North, and they'll go to the Big 12 Championship game December 2nd. If they don't win, they still can win with a game, with a victory over Colorado in two weeks' time. Uh, and a buck 43 on the clock, second and 10. Zach Taylor has to realize there's plenty of time. The clock stops on first downs in college football. Even though you're working without timeouts, plenty of time on the clock. Underneath pass is complete to Brandon Jackson. Jackson is dropped by Mark Dodge. Another tackle for Dodge. Clock is running as a quarterback gets your team up on the line of scrimmage. And you can't clock the ball here. You got to use this down to pick up yardage. Third down and three. Quick pass is dropped again. The drop pass haunts Nebraska. Peterson can't hold on. Now Peterson has had a nice night at wide receiver. He's made a lot of plays, but that was a big drop. And Zach Taylor put that ball right on the money. Peterson would have been able to move the chains, and the clock would have stopped. All right, this is it. Fourth and three. who atones for the drop of play earlier. Heck of a grab for Peterson. And an even better throw by Zach Taylor. This is a game on the line right here. Fourth down, watch how he drops the ball out over the head of an underneath defender. I mean, that is a beautiful ball by Zach Taylor. Pickup of 22. Out across the 50 to the 45. Taylor, look out! Spits it out. Is it caught? Incomplete. Incomplete, looking for Terrence Nunn. He bobbled it and lost it out of bounds. Well, the ball was delivered high, and again, <laughs> Taylor on the move. That's a pretty solid throw right there. You got to make that play if you're Terrence Nunn. He gets up, he gets both hands on the football, and Nunn, the leading receiver for Nebraska this year. That's a ball that you got to have. You got to make that play for your senior quarterback. Still plenty of time. Cornhuskers with no timeouts remaining. And if you're Zach Taylor, you want to make sure do not take a sack. Another completion to Peterson. Taylor's pass is complete. No, it's Dan Erickson with the catch, his first catch of the season. Well, what you're seeing right here is at the college level, as long as you're calm, you don't take sacks, and you throw the ball beyond the first down chains, 
you have plenty of time. As long as you keep throwing the ball beyond the chains, only two things can happen. Incomplete and the clock stops. You complete the ball and the clock stops as well. So as long as Zach Taylor continues to make good throws and good decisions, he's got plenty of time. Taylor has a man. Incomplete. Too high for none. That's a smart play by Taylor. And one of the temptations you fight as a quarterback is trying to bite off a little too much on these clock drives. And granted, you have 45 seconds left, but you don't want to get greedy. You don't want to turn the ball over on a greedy throw. Taylor lobs it. Complete. Peterson. Drop at the 18. Clock will stop on the first down. Now, this is some impressive work by Nebraska up front. They're giving Zach Taylor time. They're allowing him room to the left and the right to move. And another great play by Peterson, not only to make the catch, but to turn it north and south and get the first down. And now Taylor decides to just clock it and save some time. And I don't like that call right there because... It doesn't take you any more time to come up to the line of scrimmage and use a code word for a play that gets you back and gets you to one of your favorite clock drive plays. So many clock drives at end of, end of games, turn it turns out you go out on downs. You never want to waste downs there if you don't have to. And with 36 seconds on the clock, there was no need for Zach Taylor in Nebraska to waste a play by clocking the ball. Again, not caught Todd Peterson. Now that's the risk you run. You know, you 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 throw the ball to the turf to just catch your breath there. One incomplete pass later, you're looking at third and ten. And that puts you behind the eight ball. Zach Taylor's gonna have to make a play here if Nebraska's gonna keep this drive alive. Two more shots here. Taylor's thrown for 258 yards. To the end zone for Purify, incomplete. Jordan Peterson has been dynamite all afternoon long, and it comes down to this for Nebraska. Oh, a flag comes down late. Roughing the passer, number 94 of the defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. How does that happen? Well, this is a low percentage ball by Zach Taylor. Wow. Marcus Thornton arriving late and not exactly a violent hit, but that was a hit where he could have peeled off and avoided contact. Not a smart play by Thornton, especially on a play where Zach Taylor threw a, a very low percentage ball on third down. Would have forced a, a fourth and long. Nebraska can't afford to run the ball here. They're going to have to keep the ball in the air without timeouts. Again to the end zone and purify! Touchdown, Cornhuskers! Maurice Purify has had an absolutely terrible day. Drop passes the entire afternoon long, but when he's needed to make a play, he does. Tie game with the extra point pending. And a timeout is called by Texas A&M. They still have two remaining. They want to catch their breath before this extra point. The Purify has become the go-to guy for Zach Taylor as of late. And he's going to run a fade route, but it's not going to be the customary fade against Peterson, the quarterback. This ball is going to be deliberately underthrown. And Zach Taylor is going to take advantage of his six foot four frame. Purify, 6'4", 210 pounds. Nice ball, nice ballistics. 
And that takes a lot of guts to underthrow a fade ball and have the confidence that Purify is going to go up and make the catch. Great play between quarterback and wide receiver. And how big was the roughing the quarterback call? Sets the Nebraska record for touchdowns in a season and most passing yards in a career. He saves his best for last. A nine yard touchdown catch, throwing catch to Maurice Purifon. Big extra point coming up here, and that's an understatement. But keep in mind, 20 seconds left on the clock. Even if Nebraska converts on the point after touchdown, there's still time for AM, depending on what sort of return they can get and what Stephen McGee can put together in a play or two after the return. Jordan Congdon to give Nebraska the lead. And he does. Field. They're stunned and with good reason. We saw no indication that Nebraska was capable of a drive like this the way they've been stoned in the second half against AM. Well, they've been shut out and they not only shut down the Nebraska run game, they're creating problems for Zach Taylor, sacks, pressure in the pocket, but championship teams put together drives with the game on the line. That fourth down throw was the most impressive throw of the night. The roughing the passer call on third and 10 would have been a fourth and 10 that Zach Taylor and his offense would have been staring down. And then how about the fade route to purify? That is a route the two athletes work on during the summer. And, and purify, you watch him over the course of the last two or three games. Zach Taylor is really locked on to him. He's become the go-to guy, and Peterson made a couple big plays at the wideout position on that drive. Dennis Franchoni, he has never defeated Nebraska, Texas, or Oklahoma. Thought he had one here, but things aren't looking good with 20 ticks remaining. Uh, Dennis Franchoni wants to tell his return men here to get the ball north and south. Don't take a lot of time reversing field. You want to leave enough time for two or three plays. Stephen McGee coming out of quarterback. We saw last week with Wisconsin, Brett Bielema, their head coach, deliberately went outside on kickoffs. Is this an option here? It is an option, but, but also A&M has the option to decline. They do not go offside. They just kick away. And here comes A&M. Gary Franks is tripped up and downed at the 21 yard line. That's another rule change where you really get hurt when toe meets leather. That's when the clock stopped. The, the rule change a year ago, that wasn't the case. Today's Chevrolet players of the game are Zach Taylor of Nebraska and Mark Dodge, the veteran who performed so very well on Veterans Day for the Texas A&M Aggies. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. You know, I had a chance to talk to a couple of the coaches for Colorado when they put together the play at Michigan, Cordell Stewart to Michael Westbrook. You know, Colorado was facing a similar situation. They had about 10 or 11 seconds on the clock, and the thinking was here to get about a 20, 25 yard, yard ball on a crossing route close enough to midfield to stop the clock. Obviously, AM has a timeout, and then they take a shot at a Hail Mary. And that's really what your thinking has to be here. You never concede a football game. You don't go with the Hail Mary on this play, but you try to pick up a big enough chunk of yardage that you can put the end zone into play with Stephen McGee's arm on the last play of the game. Heck of a ball game for Zach Taylor. The senior quarterback trying to will his team to the Big 12 North title. Well, and he, he made one of the most impressive throws we've seen all year long on the fourth down conversion on that last drive. What a play. McGee swings it out to Goodson. The fastest Texas A&M Aggie with the football. 
And they call timeout. There's still one tick remaining on the stadium clock. And so this game is still going on. Still one second remaining on the stadium scoreboard. And Nebraska defenders feigning as if they're going to run off the field, but <laughs> they're taking a look back to make sure here. I think they're going to leave a second on the clock. And if this game was being played in Lincoln, Nebraska, <laughs> I'm not so sure that game clock wouldn't be reading zeros right now. And Goodson, you can't blame him with his game-breaking ability to try to make something here. But when he realizes he's hemmed in, you got to go down. And that's the right. You know, that's the right move by the officials and the scorekeeper. Okay, this could be it. McGee is not going to get it off. He is brought down by who else? Adam Carricker. And congratulations to the Nebraska Cornhuskers, the 2006 Big 12 North champs. Cornhuskers, they end up on top. A heck of a game-winning drive to finish it off. Now that, that was an ESPN instant classic right there. As Stephen McGee leading his team down the field. Looked like Texas A&M had things in hand. And then Zach Taylor with the championship on the line. The North Division. That was a drive he put together. And the fourth down conversion, the touchdown throw. Of course, a big play was a roughing the quarterback call. But Zach Thomas, very impressive. Now, Stacy Dales is standing by with some happy Huskers. Stacy, take it away. Coach, with this win, you clinched the Big 12 North. What's the feeling for you right now? Ah, oh, it's static. Just, uh, just full of a lot of emotion. Really happy for our players. Uh, Zach Taylor and these kids, they, they just truly believed in getting the job done. Our defense blocking that field goal at the end was huge. We do it every day in practice. That's how we start the practice every day. That's how we concluded it today. So it was a great, great game on both sides. You mentioned Zach Taylor. What does he mean to this program and how quickly he's taken over your offense? He's been a tremendous leader for us. And, uh, you know, he's rallied our kids. And our team totally believes him uh, in every phase. And I just can't say enough good things about the job he's done. Congratulations, Coach. Back up to you, Eric. Stacy, thank you so much. Yeah, Bill Callahan, he is a happy man tonight as he comes to Kyle Field for the very first time ever and comes away victorious. The Nebraska Cornhuskers are headed to KC as the Big 12 North champions. Well, be sure to join us tonight at 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock Central Time on ABC for Sunday Night Football. Most of you will see number four Texas take on Kansas State. Others will see Wake Forest battle Florida State. It has been an absolutely fantastic day for football and a great game played between Nebraska and Texas A&M. Our final score, Nebraska 28, Texas A&M. 27. For David Norrie and Stacey Dales, I'm Eric Collins, saying so long from College Station. This has been a special presentation of ESPN College Football on ABC.